Hey, welcome back to the Metro Wall Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we have a new startup deck for you. This is Coffee and Code, an as masterwork prognostic Q loop click compression installer deck. And these decks, mind you, are really fun. I've been enjoying and playing these sort of lists for a long time. And Midnight Sun gave us some really cool tools to tweak this into a, a bit of a more uh, spicy brew. So let's talk about as because these decks are, are, I think, fascinating. They're one of the few decks in Netrunner that are defined by their hardware package. It's not something you see very often. And as is one of the best criminals to deal with a lot of hardware. Mind you, when as came out, I wasn't really excited about their ability. But in short, the first job resource, connection resource or piece of hardware you install first time per turn is one credit cheaper. And we have a lot of those cards installed. We have all three categories in our deck. Sometimes it's a bit annoying because you're trying to get your value once per turn. But sometimes you install two in a turn. But that's the idea. It's also really important to understand any ability that says the first time per turn you do that counts your turn and the corporation's turn as two separate turns. So we're going to try and our deck is really good at that as installing as much as we can as well on the corporation's turn to really double dip in our value. And again, to understand this deck, I think we need to start with the hardware package. So we'll run through the list, but we're going to start here at Masterwork, our console. So this is as is signature console. It gives you one MU for two credits. Not too bad, but it says the first time each turn you install a piece of hardware, draw one card. Fantastic thing is that that text is active on the turn you install the masterwork. So you install this for one if it's your first hardware with as and you get a free card draw already. That's fantastic. On top of that, if we have ways to install hardware on the corporation's turn, that's another free card draw and an as reduction. So this is the basis of our engine. We have 18 pieces of hardware in this deck. But maybe the most important part of this, uh, potentially, is that it says whenever a run begins, you can pay a credit to install a piece of hardware. And when run begins means before you hit the first piece of ice, you're just kind of hanging out at the top of the run. And that's fantastic because as you see, this deck is running 18 pieces of hardware. And that's kind of an issue with a lot of decks. I want to install a lot of cards. You realize really quickly you just don't have the time to install all this hardware. You don't. You can't spend clicks just putting things on the table when your deck still needs to be able to run, generate economy and do everything else you need to do in a game of Netrunner. So this allows you to be aggressive, run and at the same time, take your credits and install things clicklessly. And that's fantastic. And a very important distinction on this card, it says that you may install a piece of hardware increasing its cost by one. That's not as if this card said, a one credit to do this ability, it increases the install cost of the card. So you still get the as reduction. So if you abstractly installed a zero cost piece of hardware with this for one credit, if it's the first hardware return you installed, it would actually cost zero credits because as abilities kicks in. Not too relevant for this deck because we don't have zero costers, but it's a very important thing to understand that it actually increases the install cost. It's not an ability cost and that's sick. This card's really important. You want to be running at least once a turn and we have a lot of good ways to make this an even easier and cheaper way to click compress. We'll get to that in a second. And then the next most important card is Prognostic Q-Loop. I love this card so much. It's so fun. It allows you to see the future. Its ability is broken up into two text boxes. The first one says, the first time each turn a run begins, you get a look at the top two cards of your stack. Now, a lot of people are a bit intimidated by these sort of lists because they have a lot of cascading triggers you have to remember. Uh, but you also have to always, almost always remember the top two cards of your stack because you're going to need that information to start making good decisions. I know in a couple of games following this, I forget constantly what's on top of my deck. I think it's a bit easier when you're kind of focused and playing. I'm trying to talk at the same time, so it gets a bit dodgy, but I promise you, you can get it. It's also worth noting that in Netrunner, in organized play, you can note take if that helps you remember the top of your deck. And why do you want to know the top of your deck? Inherently, that is an important ability because it allows you to plan your turn well, but you can spend a credit at instant speed to reveal the top card of your stack. And if it's a hardware or program, you can install it paying its cost, which means that this is one of the easiest ways to install hardware on the corporation's turn. Spend a click, show them a hardware, install it, get as is reduction, gets the masterwork draw. That's so good. Taking a card off your deck and putting on the table for one for no clicks is kind of unheard of in this game. And this allows you to get away with this 18 pieces of hardware thing. Also, of course, you can install programs. You can also install things mid run so you can surprise out some of the hardware that allows you to deal with ice. It's really, really powerful card. And again, we can make this even better and even cheaper with the, the next card we need to talk about. This is not, mind you, a hardware, but this is Chezva, the Turkish coffee that Az has been enjoying. And one of the new cards from Midnight Sun, which is now the basis of the economy engine in this uh, deck. Chezva comes down for two and gives you two recurring credits that you can only use while running central servers. And you can use these on anything as long as it's during a run on a central server, which means that you can use those two credits to pay for your masterwork trigger when you're installing hardware. You can use these Chezva credits to install things with the prognostic Q loop. 
It's very easy that you get two Chesvas down. You have four credits. You're running HQ and then spending four credits to install cards from your hand or from the top of your deck and drawing at the same time. And that is the beauty of the stack. You'll definitely see that work out in the games going forward. But this gives you this unheard of click compression and economy engine. You are setting up so quickly as long as you're hammering central servers. And we have so many good reasons why we want to do that. That is the basic package of this list. And mind you, I did publish uh, an as deck. This was, mind you, before Midnight Sun, before rotation. This is a standard list. And while this is uh, technically not a legal deck anymore because a lot of the cards rotated, if you want to get another, like a, maybe a deeper rundown to the engine, we do talk about here on the masterwork and prognostic Q loop and how you can use them. So give that a read if you want to. The link will be in the YouTube uh, description below. Otherwise, let's run through the list. I'm going to start at the hardware. We have three copies of Boomerang. This thing is so important. It is the best way to deal with ice and criminal. You can install it clicklessly or at the start of the run with prognostic or uh, masterwork. It draws you a card when it comes down. Hopefully you're installing it for free for Chesva. And this allows you firstly to deal with remote servers in the early game. It allows you to be aggressive in the early game with things like uh, bravado or dirty laundry. And then through the late game when your deck is thin, these things are coming back from the top of your deck over and over again. You can get to the late game uh, board state where your deck is one card. It's a, uh, it's a boomerang and you're installing it clicklessly for free while running central servers and it just goes back and it keeps coming it comes back it's a boomerang this card is amazing and definitely a three of it in this as list next we have a single Docklands pass and these are the sort of cards that are hardware that are not particularly good on tempo but give powerful effects and we install them clicklessly maybe while running hq as a nice surprise you'll love it it's good multi-axis on top of that two flip switch this card mind you you could consider three depending on your meta i like this card it comes down for zero credits with as you draw a card with masterwork but it's a cool card because once this is down you can start running aggressively any sort of ice mind you this allows you to jack out so if you approach an ice that you don't want to deal with you can just run away none of the subroutines are going to hit you on top of that it also allows you to clear uh, to clicklessly clear a tag on your turn which helps you deal with reality plus it helps you deal with some ice that just tags you and you don't have to break it this is how you deal with it it's not bad at all, especially because it generally comes down for free and draws you a card. Clearing a tag is actually good value. I like this a fair bit. It allows you to be aggressive, and you can also sometimes install it mid-run with a prognostic Q loop to really surprise the corporation that's just forfeited an agenda into an archer. We talked about the Masterworks Panweave. Very similar to Docklands Pass. You'll see that with all the Chesva, we're really good at running HQ for cheap. Why don't we make that into a credit denial? We gain money, they lose money. That's kind of all we want to do to keep fueling our engine and keep going. Mind you, there are some matchups where if the corporation has a good amount of economy, this doesn't do as much. It's still probably worth installing clicklessly just because it is technically an economy card for yourself. But especially against corporations that don't ice up HQ well and don't have a lot of money, this is one way to, to bring them back down. We have a single prepaid voice pad. A lot of this has to deal with the twinning, which we'll talk about in a second, but this is recurring credit. We install this for one credit with as, so it's not even credit negative the turn you install it. It's click negative. Hopefully you install it clicklessly. Uh, but we have a fair few events that all cost some amount of credit, so this is not too bad at all. Uh, it's not necessary for the list, but I like it, and uh, it allows you to play those events. You feel better about all the events you play in the list. We have a single simul chip, and honestly, this is a holdover from an older list. I don't think this should be in the list. Abstractly, we were playing this because we were running two copies, technically three copies classically of Revolver, which is a sentry breaker that has a shelf life so that we can trash and discard and, and redraw this or reinstall this, which is kind of the idea. I think that with this list, actually, Begalter is probably better than Revolver. You might want to keep one Revolver as like an early aggression tool. I feel like Flip Switch kind of fits that, that um, situation. And do you think you could also consider playing Clot in this list if you wanted to get influence? And Simul Chip with Clot is a really nice combination. But this by no means should be in the list. I don't think we use it in any game. If it does anything, it allows you to be a bit more, um, uh, you can lose basically breakers to damage from hand and still bring them back in the late game by discarding a Chesva. Yeah, I don't know that this should be in here. And finally, a T400 Memory Diamond. Man, I don't like this card, but in this list, it's actually not too bad. We want a lot of MU, and this is the neutral MU card in startup format, and it gives you extra hand size, which is kind of nice. It allows you to play around some of the damage decks a bit better, but the extra MU is really important, specifically because we have a lot of things to install. We have a lot of coffee to drink and a lot of programs to get on top of that, so this helps a lot. Uh, again, clickly installing it, so it feels a bit better. We jump up to the events, three Blueberry Diesel, not a huge card advantage card, but in the early game, we want to find economy, we want to find masterwork and prognostic as soon as possible. This helps you get there. I really like the filter draw of this. It works really well with Class Act 2, and we'll get to the Class Act, but I, I like this a fair bit. We have three Bravado and three Dirty Laundry. Not much to be said here. We have a single prepaid, and this allows us to be aggressive while still pressuring the corporation at the same time setting up. So much of our engine is about installing things while running. Why don't we make those runs better? And these are the two best cards to do that. We have a single pinhole threading just for the meta. I don't think I actually played this a lot. There's a chance that you don't need this, but we didn't run into a lot of like Managarm Anoetic decks, and these are the sort of ways that we can deal with upgrades uh, well. 
because it's hard to boomerang into an Anoetic or Manic Arm because you can't run that often in the early game uh, only once a turn until you have your breaker set up. So this helps you with that gap. And then we have three sure gamble because it's good and we have prepaid, so it's good. Resource package, yeah, that's right. Three red team. Kind of like this. It is the job resource you can pay. So four credits to the turn, it comes down. And we spend a lot of time just running central servers. So this gets uh, seven credits off of it in, in some, if I'm not mistaken. And that is good money. You want to get three credits. You want to be running cheaply with your chess buzz. So this becomes just money, not even like a refund, like raw money. And this is really nice with the engine. It's also really good to get a reason why running archives is profitable for the deck so that you can use your Chesva credits while running a central server to install your stuff with prognostic and the, and the like. Class Act comes down for three credits. It is a connection, right? A resource connection, a powerful ability. Not much has to be said about this card. It does sometimes get a bit awkward and you'll see in some games, I forget about that. This is messing up my prognostic Q loop order, but probably worth that uh, little speed bump every once in a while. Incredibly powerful. Definitely want to play this. And finally, a new card from Midnight Sun, the twinning. We're playing two copies of this. This is incredibly powerful multi-axis. As long as you're using credits from a card, once per turn, you get to put a power counter on this and that power counter equates to an extra axis. So many of the games are us setting up, finally getting our twinning down, and then seeing like three cards on HQ in a turn, three cards on R&D in the same turn. You can do some really wild stuff. We have a lot of cards that have power counters on them, or sorry, that have credits on them we can use. We have three Chesva, we have a mantle and a prepaid voice pad. And the important thing about this card too is this card says first time each turn you spend credits. And the same way we're trying to use that uh, first time each turn on the corpse turn with um, the masterwork and with the uh, as trigger, we have a way to do that on the corpse turn with specifically mantle. Chesva and prepaid you can only use on your turn, but mantle you can use for hardware or programs. So if you have a mantle installed and you need to spin up your uh, your twinning a bit faster, you can spend a credit on this to just fire the prognostic Q loop or just paste one to boost the strength of a breaker at any paid ability window. It's a nice way to, uh, to, to charge this up. We're playing two. We probably honestly could get away with only playing one and then having three influence for maybe something else like a Stargate, which I'm a big fan of. You might need some more memory diamonds to make sure the MU is not a thing, but we want to play two to play to see this card. And I think we're seeing the card a bit too early before we're set up. So I think going down to one is actually probably reasonable for this list. Then we have the Icebreaker Suite and the programs. We talked about the Chesbas and the Mantles versus the programs. Recurring credits we can use for everything the deck wants to do. Masterwork, Prognostic Q-Loop, Charge the Twinning, Run Cheaply. All of that's perfect. Red Team, Go Centrals, Go. And then Icebreakers, we have a single Begalter and two Revolvers as our killers. And the Begalter is actually way better than I thought it was. This is the best breaker in startup, a killer by a mile. And this card even gets a lot better because this card refunds you two credits when you fully break your first century a turn. And so if you're running a central server, and again, the corporation largely has the ice centrals um, considering the amount of value we're getting off of running them, with the Chesva credits, this just becomes money. The bookkeeper just pays us. And so that's a reason why I'd consider playing more Begulters than Revolvers and eventually probably just drop the Revolvers entirely and then play some copies of Mutual Favor to be able to draw the breakers from our deck because I think Revolver was a holdover from the old as list and standard that wanted to play as many trash abilities. And this is not that deck. We have a single cleaver as a fractor. I don't know what else to play that's better. The cool thing about cleaver is that it's good at the low strength barriers. And for the big strength barriers, we have things like uh, boomerang. So we, we can get away with it. And then finally, we have a hyperbaric, which I thought might have been a bit too cute. The idea was that this deck, we have so many recurring credits that we can use to charge the hyperbaric. You can run HQ, run archives with red team, whatever. Take two credits off of your... um off of your uh, your coffee, your Chesva, and put them on the Hyperbaric. And eventually you get this up to huge strength where you're breaking every code gate for one to three credits. And at that point, you're running centrals and making good money off of Red Team and getting refunded with the Chesva. And that's the list. And again, it's such a strange list. You need to probably see it in action if you haven't seen this before because it is unlike anything else. It's a really wild, very click compressed engine that wants to set up. It's also really interesting because this deck is really good at it. Like the early game is a bit dodgy because you need to get your economy up. You need to slow the corporation down. So I recommend some strong face checking to make them res ice and really think about their situation. Once you get to the mid game and you have your engine installed, you're flying. And at the late game, you're an absolute monster when you're running central servers, gaining credits on like turn 12 or whatever. Um, I do want to say real quick, the earlier version of this list that I played a couple of games with uh, following this, I think it had two copies of Gatchapon, which is kind of a cute install on zero cost. It's a bit awkward with as maybe you get this down for one credit with Masterwork, but this allowed you to filter your deck, get out some cards and install things clicklessly. But the problem is like uh, there's sometimes we missed. We just had too many hardwares and events for this package. I ended up cutting it and playing what you saw on the list before. So you could consider this, but I feel like you probably don't want to play as many events and maybe play some more virtuals, something like that. Top of that, we talked about Stargate. I think this is an interesting inclusion for the deck. As long as your MU is okay, maybe you need another memory diamond. 220 is probably a bit too much because at the time you draw one early, it's maybe uh, you're still like trying to work on setting up and getting your recurring credits. Clot, 
Again, I think a thing you can consider for the deck based off the meta, I've run into a, a bit of fast events, but I found other ways to deal with them. I still think Claude is okay, but you need the simul chip package. And lastly, I do want to shout out Mutual Favor. And I think Mutual Favor is actually quite valuable in this deck, especially if we start running fewer copies of Breakers, because we're really good at like running archives or running a central server for value with our red teams and our Chezzas and stuff like this. And this allows us to get a Breaker from our deck and install it. So now that we're running with our Begalter and actually getting money and we're less reliant on Boomerangs in the early game. This is definitely worth pursuing. I would definitely look into this. It's also an interesting effect because sometimes you see the top of your deck with your prognostic Q loop and you see it's two events and you really want to fire your prognostic on the corporation's turn. So sometimes getting a shuffle is nice. Uh, that's a bit of a mixed bag, but that's the idea. And this is the list. Uh, this is coffee and code. I've had so much fun with this list. I definitely want to continue tinkering with it again. The first games are a bit messy, but it gets better over time. And I start remembering what's on top of the deck, which is important. Let me know what you think. I think there's so many ways to build as with Chesva. I've seen, I, I want to do a coffee tribal deck with, um, with Palace Cafe, but that takes a fair bit of work. Not a lot of connections. You need connections and startup, unfortunately, but that's it. Enjoy the games. Um, we'll see you on the other side. All right, we're off back in startup. We're playing an as coffee and code deck. Uh, we are a twinning based deck to get a lot of value off prognostic Q loop and masterwork, uh, using Chesva that will power our runs. We're playing against, um, uh, Prop Devos. We've found a, found a lot of Prop Devos in the last week or so, and our opening hand doesn't really have any setup cards. The twinning is obviously very good early. It's a one of in the deck, and it's kind of hard to find. Gatchbond kind of gets you there. But we want to open with a Chesva, a Masterwork, a Prognostic Q Loop, and some economy. Bravado, Bravado can be hard to play. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, this, we can work with this. So it's tricky to figure out what kind of deck they're playing. Um, it could be a trap deck. It could be a, you know, check a Scion type deck. It could just be Value Seamless Launch, NDPD Cordon. There's a lot of ways to play Prop Devost. We might not run. We generally run every turn, but we don't have to make a successful run, I guess. So server one and ice, usually that's um, an ubiquitous vig, but they could play us for sure. So what do we do here? We can on tempo prepaid voice pad um, and dirty laundry, or we can wait till next turn. We could start with a masterwork to draw a card. Uh, I guess we want a blueberry first if we find a, a hedge fund or sorry, a sure gamble. We'd want to play that sooner. Oh, yeah, perfect. Uh, we'll take both of them just because we have the prepaid. So here we could do prepaid for gamble to get our money's worth, or we could put the masterwork down to draw. I think prepaid sure gamble is good enough. Again, first hardware or program installed is one uh, or job even is one cheaper. So we can sure gamble off of this credit. And this is another way to charge the masterwork. I, I don't think we need to run. Let's just draw. Next turn, we'll install a masterwork for one credit, draws a card on its own ability. And from there, then we can dirty laundry R&D. Maybe they probably advance server one. Looks like it's likely ubiquitous VIG. Sometimes it's just an agenda, which is annoying. Server two. OK, we also watch out for Urtic Ciphers. We've died to those a fair bit. All right, we have a Chesva. Fortunately, not really a way to use those credits unless we install hardware on a run. So we can, in theory, ooh, so we could install the Chesva for two. We'd be on six credits. We can dirty laundry be on four credits or five credits because of the prepaid. Then we can use the masterwork trigger to use the Chesva to install the boomerang to check HQ. Splashy, why don't we do it? I think we have enough money. So we'll play this to go HQ. Then we'll install hardware. This, we can use those credits from here. And now we got a boomerang and we're good to go. What's annoying here? Ping would be annoying. We have one click left. Did they mulligan? They mulligan. So there might be agendas in here. We don't have Bologna credits, unfortunately. It's not cat. Makes a lot of sense. We're going to boomerang that. Eventually, this becomes a problem. Uh, generally, we don't want to break it. We're just going to boomerang it every time. Like, I don't think we want to install our icebreakers. What do we have? We have a cleaver. Not very good against a five strength. So they can advance just about anything here. Checking is a bit difficult. They advance the Aket. OK, if they advance anything else. Oh, interesting. Vasilisa, shovel that back. We have nine credits, one click. We run server two to check a scion. How bad is it? If it's an Urtica, we die. I feel like we can't die, but they could score out an agenda here. Even if they hit us with a uh, uh, crypto crash, I think we're okay. Yeah, because we have a lot of burst economy. Next turn, we can always dirty laundry R&D to recover. All right, but we're mostly set up. We just want to prognostic Q loop. And then anytime we run a central server, we have two credits worth of economy to use. Hopefully we're clicklessly installing hardware to draw through our deck. You kind of get the idea. We can also use these credits just to trash cards off the top of R&D. If we find like ubiquitous vig, spin doctors, Whatever you expect. We only have six credits. Maybe we can find her pan weave. Maybe put on some financial damage. They're thinking. All good. Coffee's getting to me. We're getting excited. And the twinning would be a perfect setup here. New remote server. We haven't checked any of the other ones. Maybe we'll consider checking this one. Advance. Advance. Okay. No idea what this is. It's a Vladisabursk. That has to be in the same server. No, of course. So I think they want to server three on here, but that would be, it's a three, two agenda or three, one agenda. So now we have to deal with the Vladisabursk. 
But yeah, they can fast advance three twos or three ones. Luckily, if they do that, uh, generally there's no agenda three two or three one that's like super tempo positive besides um, uh, potentially license acquisition. But otherwise here, they're going to be pretty broke and we can go and easily dirty laundry down that uh, Blitis Abyss. So I feel like this is a really expensive fast advance. They got one of the advancements for free, but it's still three, four, five. Eh, it's not the worst. So they just want to put that. Yeah, okay. They'll fix this up. Six. So it should be advance five. Res two. Advance one. No, that's right. Okay, it's just a Beal. Like, that's fine. They're on one credit. We can start pressuring them. Uh, if this is a VIG, they can still res it. Okay, the question is here. We can use our masterwork to install a masterwork, funny enough. Uh, but I think we're going to draw. We want to get a hardware. Oh, actually, no, because we're running, we can't. Um, this is only for central servers. We'd still want a hardware if we could. Yeah, that's perfect. But Dirty Laundry Server 2. Use the credit from that. Server 2. We'll pay a credit to install the prognostic, which is one cheaper. It draws a card. Ooh, red team. Forgot what we're playing about. Not too bad, especially if we want to run and use value from Chesva. We'll trash that for four. They get advancement probably on the VIG. Here, uh, we can just run R&D clicklessly, last click. I don't think there's much we're scared of. Not clicklessly, but last click, right? We have two credits to trash things. Yeah, we could also consider drawing. We'll just run R&D. Uh, no, thank you. I don't know whether we need the second Chesva at some point. It's a Bologna. Wow, we can use the Chesva credits. Not too bad. Pretty good. This thing so far has given us four credits. It's cost us two. Let's see how much money we make off of this thing. And next turn, we can easily like red team, technically sure gamble, red team, run R&D. Hopefully we draw a hardware to install. They didn't res server one. If that was a ubiquitous fig, you definitely want that up, I think. Maybe they're slow rolling into another um, Lidisabirsk. That'd be scary. But luckily, they don't have a lot of money to operate them. Oh, it's reversed accounts. Okay. They spend a click for us to lose four. That's not an issue whatsoever. Uh, Well, okay. It's a small issue. <laughs> it's a small issue. We'd have to click to four. So we can do, like, we want to install this for four. So we can do credit, credit, credit. I feel like that's fine. We're not drawing. Let's draw once. It would be a dirty laundry that, like, gets us out of the hole. Oh, or a bravado, potentially. Ah, uh, shit. If we didn't draw, we could have prepaid this turn. So we're going to lose prepaid value. What can we do next turn? Let's just click up so we can red team next turn. Not great. I probably shouldn't have drawn there. Because I think we wanted to get that prepaid voice pad credit every turn if we can. I don't think it's the biggest deal. I think it was only one dirty laundry that was playable in that board state, barring a bravado into the Aquette, which wouldn't be the end of the world. But giving them money now seems bad. Because here they could do credit, credit, hedge fund. We don't want them to do credit, hedge fund, something else that we have to actually interact with. But running this board is easy because the advancements, we know where they're going to an Aquette or R&D Ice might be a Vasilisa. We saw that in HQ. All right, they're up at four. A pan we would be good now to get some economic denial. Obviously, we have to deal with the Aquette. Uh, here we can open with Sure Gamble, install Red Team. We could run archives. If we are going to do all that, let's blueberry first to find some hardware. We don't want the masterwork. The hyperbaric is fine. Oh, yeah, we should always just be running anyways to prognostic off the top. I forgot about that, of course. So we'll play that. We'll install the red team for four because it's a job. And we'll run archives. And now we have credits to burn. Uh, so we might as well... We're not going to masterwork. We could actually replace the prognostic. But let's see what the prognostic does first. So we can look at the top two for one. It's a flip switch. So we're going to install that using all the Chesva credits. So again, six credits off this card. Choose a piece of hardware. Oh, that's just a look. Oh, because I have to pay for it. I'm, a, I'm not smart. I'm not smart. <laughs> it's been a while since I've played that. We were just looking at the top two. I have to actually click and pay a credit, which is what comes off of this. Okay, so, so, so sorry. Install. So that's free. It draws a card. It gets us the class act that we saw. We want to get that down sooner than later. Connections, mind you, also one cost cheaper. It's jobs, connections, and hardware. Uh, red team to gain three. We do access. Pravdavos gets an advancement, probably going to be on the Aket, and we see they threw out a mess in Chesfo and a ping. Okay. And flip switch is really good. It means the ping tag doesn't matter. It means if we run into something scary, like a mess in Chesfo, if that's the scariest thing, we can always, like, bounce away. Card in server four. Wouldn't mind just red teaming into R&D, I think. I think it's likely a Vasilisa, and the tag is not really important. I honestly don't know if a second Chesfo is necessary. We'd actually have to click to install it, which is a bit bad. But yeah, we definitely red team archives to start our turn to see what's on top. Oh, there you go. There's ice. Let's force their money. So red team, this makes a run itself. So let's just go ahead and red team. I guess R&D is the most important thing. Likely a Vasilisa. We'll do prognostic to look at the top two because we're not installing. It's a red team and a cleaver. Uh, not very important. It's a loot box. Hold on. One it's install hardware. This is technically still our or a turn. What does this do? End the run. Reveal the top three cards. I already forgot what they were. <laughs> this is not good. Uh, so we'll install this. Oh, hold on. The trigger, you have to trash it. I don't know. if It's probably not going to work on JNet, but you can use this ability to install another console, but I'd have to trash this manually. Apparently that's not working. I totally forgot what's on top, which is super important. We pay more attention here. 
And the run less the runner pays two, not a problem. Reveal the top three cards, add one of them. So it was Cleaver and something else. I think it was a red team, right? So I think, yeah, I want a Master Rick. I'm pretty sure that you can do this. At the beginning of the run, uh, first time each turn, install a piece of hardware, draw a card. When the run begins, you may install a piece of hardware. So I have to trash this so that I can install this one from hand. I'll do it using this credit, which will draw the red team. So now it's a cleaver on top. So that changes the value of the loot box. I didn't want them to see a red team. So now we can let this fire. All right, a bit of a mess. A lot of triggers here in ads, but once you get them down, you're okay. Wait for the coffee to kick in, huh? All right, so loot box. We'll pay two. Reveal the top card at cleaver. It's fine. Now there's nothing on R&D, which is obviously very good. We want to get a class act uh, cute, uh, from Masterwork. Yeah, so there's two triggers here. You have Masterwork at the beginning of the run. So in theory, they shouldn't res ice until we say we're cool because we have to do all the triggers. Uh, costs. Oh, touche. Yeah, yeah. It should cost. No. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so it only costs us one from hand because of as, but it should cost one extra because of the Masterwork trigger itself cost of credit. All right. This is a mess. <laughs> uh, we'll pay two. Maybe they put a cleaver in our hand. It's a cleaver revolver in Chesva. Okay, so the most expensive card is a cleaver, which is the card we want the most, I think. Probably the Vasilis on Archives, which is not amazing for um revolver. It's two credits. Like, ah, okay, that's fine, actually. That's a tiered subscription. I don't know. I didn't see that they res that. Okay, well, we we want to trash that. They gave us a revolver. Interesting. So they got two credits. You can breach the server here. Does this shuffle? Yeah, so we the top of the deck is totally unknown. So the prognostic Q loop could fire. All right, what do we do here? I think we run server four. We want to keep their money now. They're drawing a toll booth, so every credit they have matters. I think we can trash that and install the class act. It'll cost us four, though. Mm. We could also just Chesva run R&D again. I don't know if that feels good. They probably want to run server four. Yeah, we already ran. In the wall to install hardware, um, no. We could, in theory, install the prognostic, but it doesn't do much. We've already got our free card job. So we either install the class act or click for a credit. The class act is one cheaper next turn. We know the toll booth is coming down. I think I'm just going to click for a credit and throw out one of these hardware. It's actually probably good to keep the prognostic Q loop because it's a click list like card draw while we run central. And maybe they toll booth R&D. If they raise a toll booth on R&D, I think we're pretty happy because we lose the money to Chesva if we want to. Yeah, I think so. All right, they're drawing up unknown card. And eventually, as the cat gets annoying, eventually it does. Uh, we boomerang it. We generally don't want to find our cleaver. Mind you, we don't have any mutual favors in this deck, so we're trying to get by on just our boomerangs. Uh, eventually, the hyperbaric, and especially with Chesva, it's really easy to charge. It does do really well into um, into Mesna Chesva, and even uh, it's not the worst into Toll Booth. The issue with this though is like maybe we're going to be too greedy with our Ch uh, with our Chesvi credits. I think I think we install a Chesva and just run R and D next turn or next click. Probably the Toll Booth. Maybe they ice something up. At least if they res a Toll Booth, they won't have any money. So whatever. Card in server five. Okay. I think I can install the Chesva. Go a bit wild. And we can go an R&D team, uh, red team R&D. There's not a lot we can install. Top two cards of the deck, Bravado, Q-Loop. Shit, <laughs> those are not good. Those we cannot interact with. We can install hardware. This is three credits, and we still have four clicks to trash stuff, or four credits worth of trashable uh, power. What a sentence. All right, let's see what they advance. They advance server five. We can consider charging it. It's an Aket off the top. They advance the that. So I don't know what server five is. Uh, I think we consider running it. And then last click, put down the class act. If they raise a toll booth here, I think we're happy. Might just be a spin doctor. Yeah, there's a toll booth. That's fine. Uh, we don't have any way to deal with that. But at least uh, they spent a lot of money. That's going to end the run. A boomerang will deal with that relatively okay. On It's worse for us on, on remote servers, of course. Uh, and then we'll just install the class act for three. Yeah, that draws us a fair bit. We haven't drawn this turn, so we get the filter draw, if I'm not mistaken. So what do we want? We don't want a masterwork. I think that solves it. We just don't want a masterwork. All right, our Chesvas, useless this turn, unfortunately. I feel like we might want to cut down the amount of events in this deck just to make it a bit more consistent. Planogram is an easy way for them to get three credits. Seamless advance. Are they just bealing us out? Tomorrow's headline would be the worst. Ah, oh, we got a tag. That's fine. We can clear those clicklessly. Okay. Beginning of turn. These red teams have been good, honestly. Uh, I think we can red team R&D. We also can Bravado uh, Archives. Unfortunately, we can't do Red Team at the same time as a Bravado. Let's Red Team R&D. Let's see the top of the deck. There's a chance we install the Prognostic just to draw. It's a gadget bond. Oh, that's totally installable. Install hardware from hand. Um, no, but we will. This, pay one uh, from one of these. To reveal a gadget bond, we'll draw a card. It's either the Boomerang or the Dirty Laundry. 
I think we're going to go for the boomerang just so we have a way to deal with the remote or run HQ. And we can breach here. We have to make sure we remember to clear the tag. They get an advancement. I don't think there's much they can do with it. It's a hedge fund off the top. Okay. So this we want to fire on the opponent's turn. It's super important. I think I'm just going to flip switch to the tag. What else are we doing? I think we are bravadoing archives. Uh, then we can boomerang HQ, run HQ. It gives them a credit. So next turn they can do credit, credit, credit. They can't hedge fund. Uh, Docklands Pass would be sick. I wonder if we crack this for a Docklands Pass. Cracking it while running Centrals is really good because we have three credits to play with. Maybe a twinning would be good too. Let's go archives. We have to run a server with ice. I don't think there's much they can res on one. I'm pretty sure this is a Vasilisa. Install hardware. We've already drawn. I don't think we need to. I'm going to try and use the gatchup on here. Blueberry Diesel, Cleaver, Begalters, Panweave. Ooh, Panweave's really interesting. Oh, but we can't. It's Cleaver or Begalter. We'll do the Cleaver. It's free. Uh, actually, no. I don't know. It's hard to deal with that, Aket. I don't think we need the Cleaver. This just clears our deck out. Comes in for one. Three more cards to shuffle back. Okay. So, Panweave, Pinhole Threading. What, we want the Panweave back for sure. I wish we could have drawn that. The Blueberry Diesel will find it. And I think the Begalter. It's so one of our best ways to deal with Vasilisa. It actually is credit positive with Chesvas. Uh, I think that's enough. We could have done that on their, on their turn. We wouldn't have drawn. We now have 10 credits. Here we can just remove the tag manually, install a Rizeki. I don't even know if we need the Rizeki money. This seems a bit greedy. We know there's a hedge fund on top. I think we could probably just do Hyperbaric. We might have wanted to install Hyperbaric first because it's a nice way to use these counters. Okay. And I think we're going to flip switch the tag. It's fairly credit positive. And we've already, have we installed the hardware this turn? I don't think we have. There's a chance we install the red team. That cost us five. Shit. So we did install something. Don't like installing a last click. What do we install? Oh, Gatchapon, of course. Gatchapon ate our ability as well. Okay, triple credit. We have edge funds, so we want to be annoying if we can this turn. Luckily, we can. We have four credits to our name, so we can install the Hyperbaric to start charging it for the remote server. I think like that's fine. I feel like... I don't even know. We have a boomerang. I don't think we need the hyperbaric. Maybe this doesn't make a lot of sense in the deck. We'll run R&D. We're going to put the boomerang. So let's let's install the masterwork trigger first, just because we're going to draw. And so looking at the top two and drawing one of them doesn't make a lot of sense. So we'll put the boomerang here. Uh, we got to draw a chest for our boomerang. We'll take the boomerang. Look at the top two of the stack. We can still prognostic. It's a Docklands pass. So that's perfect for HQ. Wow. And a class act coming up. Breach serving. Oh, I should have red teamed. I'm not red teaming. Whoops. This is a bit of a mess. <laughs> ah, learning as. I'll take three credits. We just have to make sure we take them after the run. Because we can't use the credits. Oh, no, we take the money right away. If successful. Yeah, it's not after the run. A successful run ends. All right, let's see what they're advancing. It's an Urtica Cypher. We can trash that for free. So they are running Urticas. Good to know. Let's let us see deeper if we want to go back. Um, okay. So I do think we still want a Docklands Pass HQ. Let's run R&D again. This is going to give them the credit so that they can, uh, uh, no. Ping? Okay, we'll run, uh, technically we'll red team HQ, right? No. So we'll boomerang this. They get a credit and an advancement. Oh, we can only break one of them. Mind you, when this is triple advance, it gets five strength, and we can only break one of the subroutines. So very powerful triple advance when you get that for free. That's a huge deal. <laughs> These red teams are, like, really good. Okay, and now we can do prognostic. We're going to have to spend credits out of pocket. Docklands pass. So we'll see two cards. We haven't seen our twinning yet. Obviously, it would be really good. We're charging all the time. NAPD cordon. Love it. Get rid of that. And not cat. Okay, shuffle the boomerang. And now the top of the deck is shuffled. I forgot what the second card is, but luckily it's not going to matter too much. Let's we'll just draw once. Gatchel one's perfect. An easy way to find the twinning. And we still have a revolver for the remote. They'll probably hedge fund here. We need to keep our money up if we're playing around cordon. All right, 10 credits. I would love to install a hardware first, which we'll probably do while running, and then install the Gatchapon so it doesn't eat our trigger. So let's run R&D. Uh, let's do Masterwork first. Install hardware. Install this. For free. Uh, masterwork. Okay. Take the one we want. An HQ. Good top two cards to stack. It's a pan weave. Fantastic. Pretty good. We have one simul chip in the list if we lose our hyperbaric if we need it, but the pan weave on top is really good to know. I think that's it. They get an advancement. Again, it looks like it is a Vasilisa here on Archives. It's a blown out. We can steal that. Chess was doing work. Okay, cool. R&D still wide open. So now we can run HQ. The Panweave is probably still worth it. 
I'm worried we're getting low on credits, but it, technically it is a credit card, a positive card. So we can run HQ. I think we have enough to do all this. So we'll run HQ with this. We'll install the gadget bond. So we probably are not going to use this this turn because if it gets us the 20, it doesn't really help. All right, we'll boomerang that. They get a credit and an advancement. So kind of undoing the uh, the pen. We've admittedly, though, we still have to get in here and we see two cards. And now I will do prognostic Q loop, pay credit. It's a pan weave. We're paying out of pocket. Money is not amazing. Ping. One more. Basilisa. Okay, cool. They lost a credit. We gained a credit. We still have six credits. That's, I don't know how many red teams we're on. Two. We didn't believe in ourselves. Man, it's been such a good card. Draw. And we'll try and fire. Oh, there it is. We'll try and fire that. Um, This is really important. We'll try and fire the Gatchapon on their turn, if we remember. I think I might just click for credit here. Now, I think like, we need a boomerang. Oh, Bravado's perfect, too. We haven't been using our um our prepaid voice pad in a, in a minute. Oh, this deck is fun. Eight strength. Not eight strength, but eight advances on the Akat. Okay, so that could be the Facilisa. Card and server five. We have to check most of those. Just because they are on Seamless. They'd have to double Seamless out the Bologna, which is a bit unlikely, considering there is one Seamless in the bin. Uh, so I'm going to use the Gatchapon. Does this get us anything? Full whiff. Oh man. Yeah, I can't do hardware. I don't know about the Gatchapons on this list. Shuffle three cards back. At least we can remove stuff from the game. So Simon Chip can go back. Sure Gamble can go back. Bravado can go back. The other ones are not that important. Mind you, you can re-over-install your class act, which is gun. Good. Okay. All right. Rezeki for one. Do we check server five? How do we check server five if we need to check server five? See, I don't know. I do not know. We can't deal with a lot of ice unless we get boomerang off the top, and we're kind of likely to. There's three and nine, so one and three chance. There's a chance we just do twinning bravado R&D. Mind you, it's really expensive to deal with the now cat normally. Let's draw ones for boomerang. Uh, Simon chip, does that do anything? It's a clickless install to draw a card. That's good. Okay. I think we're just going to go for it. Let's twinning bravado R&D. Okay, so we have some triggers here. Hopefully they don't res. Uh, first will masterwork. Oh, they rezzed. It's a ping. Okay. Uh, they have to wait for us, in theory. We have the first thing. Like, we should be doing this before they, they do anything. So we'll install this uh, for free. Draws a card. There's on top. Look at the top two cards of stack. Yeah, it's a Chesva. We could actually install that. It's credit positive. It's a bit, you know, much. We don't really need it. Continue counter ice. We only have two credits, so we can't Bologna. Well, we could with all the Chesva credits, but we're going to use some of them to, um, to one of them to break the ping. So we're going to break the cleaver into the ping. It's just a low end the run that gives a tag when it's rezzed. Do we pull another Chesva? I think we should. So we'll do prognostic. Stall the Chesva. So we still can't seal Bologna. Oh, we should have used the twinning. I think it triggers here, though. And in theory, they could win if server five is a Bologna and they advance it. That's scary. Predictive planogram. Hedge fund. Okay. We have one click left. We know there's a boomerang on top of the deck. Fortunately, we have to float the tag here if we check server five. But we could easily lose two. It would be the last Bologna and a seamless in hand. They could also seamless out a Beal and we'd lose to that as well. But the question is, how bad is floating a tag? With a simul chip, I'm not too worried about it. I think we can consider running server five. If it's an Urtica, we're okay thinking how do we run this and not be able to steal Bologna like that's a big issue we could also run HQ uh, to fire Ban Panweave and Docklands Pass we have to pull the boomerang from the top of the deck which costs us uh well we can't do it we use our prognostic huh okay we might lose here let's see it's a Bologna or a Beal and they need a seamless yeah <laughs> me too me too all right but Silver 5 could be anything it could be ubiquitous Vig, Urtica oh wow uh might actually just be here they're fast advancing out with um What's it called? And we could play Claude on our list. We have simul chips, but this might just be um the uh, upgrade, the Vladisibirsk. Now, if you wanted to play Mantle, it gives you a way to fire and charge your twinning on um on their turn. Because Mantle allows you to spend credits. Um, I think on programs or hardware, I think maybe it says. As opposed to Chesva, which we only use on runs on central servers, so we can't use those on their turn. NAPD Cordon. Interesting. So okay, all agendas cost four, which is fine for central servers. We have six credits of recurring credits. Uh, do we prognostic this turn? I think we need money to consider. Okay, we have seven credits. Okay. So they put a card in server five. So if that was a Bologna, they might have been able to score the Bologna, but they didn't have in hand uh, anything else they needed, uh, which would be a seamless launch. They might have drawn into it with the predictive planogram, so this still could be a Bologna. If we want to steal, score the Bologna or steal the Bologna, it'd be five credits plus four credits plus two credits plus two credits. So that's probably more money. 
that we have. We know there's a boomerang on top of the stack. So we could have actually prognosticed on their turn. I don't think so. Uh, maybe. In terms of agenda, say that's a blown at 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's still a fair few points. We haven't seen a single spin doctor. They drew a lot that turn and they installed in server five, which could be a blown up. What else could they do? They could seamless advance, advance, and they could still score out with a Vladisabirsk if server five is a Vladisabirsk. I think we just go centrals though. And that's the issue. In server 20, we could consider playing a couple more MU cards and like playing Stargate. And I wonder if that's actually better because uh, we already have built an HQ pressure. But HQ, if we run HQ, we see three cards. I think we run HQ. I think we just let them have server five. We just want to make sure that we have at least four credits. Look at the top two cards of stack out. We know it's a boomerang and a bravado. So now we're going to hit this, install it for one. It's a boomerang. We'll put that here. Uh, bang one. Masterwork. Bravado's perfect. Uh, another boomerang is actually interesting, but I think the bravado is kind of what we want. Put it here. Continue. We'll boomerang it. The end of the run, they get a credit and advancement, which helps them a lot with the NPD cord and actually maybe even allows them to score at a Bologna. Maybe this is a misplay, let alone the Beal can be a 5-3 Beal. I think a lot of people forget the text on here is potentially quite relevant. Yeah, double advance. The Disabirsk with the Bologna, they could also just do advance, 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 move over the, the Disabirsk counters. So they'll lose a credit here. Panweave, we gain a credit. They get another advancement. Okay, yeah, it does look like it is what we think it is. Um, I'm not going to use an extra counter here. I'm going to use it on R&D. Ping. Okay. Shuffle. Woo! How much money do we need to run server one? And we have, I think we bought him to, how did we lose a boomerang? Did we lose a boomerang somehow? I don't remember losing a boomerang. Okay. Did I hit no on one of the boomerang triggers? Whoops. I think we can broad R&D, see two cards and hope. Maybe we wanted to draw there. I don't know. We're going to break the ping for one breach here. We'll spend an extra. That's the Beal. Use our chest for credits. All right. <laughs> Close one. Good game. Is that Vladisa, Birsk and Bologna in, in? So there's still a, still a few foot agendas. Credits spent 106 in 12 turns. And that's so much of this recurring credits, right? Oh, Urtica protecting. Ooh. So that's an Urtica protecting of a Disabirsk, which means that they couldn't have scored a Bologna next turn, so they probably wouldn't have won. But what they can do is when we access this, they get the free advancement from Pravdevos, which they've already used, and then they can move over the counters from the, from the uh, what's it called? From the uh, Vladisabirsk, and they can make this, uh, what, five damage Urtica, which is wild. I like a bluff into running a threatening game point. Yeah, the fact that they played NEPD Corden just to um, entice us to running an Urtica is so cool. I really like that, that headspace. Uh, but yeah, we had the four credits. We got our engine set up. We were a bit slow on our multi-axis, but I think we got everything going. We made, a, I think, a fair few stumbles, but hey, this deck is a bit tricky. This is our first game, but we're going to do more. In fact, here's another one. All right, Coffee and Code. Uh, we are playing as against uh, Built to Last here in the startup format. Our opening hand, pinhole threading. I don't know if that's that important in this matchup. Maybe you can deal with a Kayambe grid in the mid to late game, but we have a Sure Gamble, Dirty Laundry, a Chesva, but no real ways to use the Chesva credits. Uh, Bugalter is not a card we really want in our opening hand. We're assuming Built to Last is a pretty fast deck. A lot of times wants to jam agendas quickly with an on-tempo ability. Mind you, they get two credits the first time they advance a card. So it's very good for them to put things in remotes if we advance them, and then hopefully do something good with them, score them out. I'm going to go for the mulligan here. We definitely want the masterwork. We definitely want the prognostic Q loop, uh, the class act. Any of that stuff is really good. Boomerangs are really good as a way that we can quickly run the remote server if they're jamming on soon as turn one. I think this hand is actually, mm, it's comparable. Let's see if the blueberry diesel uh, fixes it. Yeah, there's a lot to remember with this deck. And I think some of the last games that may have preceded this are a bit sloppy because I'm trying to talk and I'm trying to remember the top of the deck and our opponent's thing. And it's, it's really difficult, but I promise you this deck is really fun to play. It gives you a lot of like player expression, which is fantastic. Did they mulligan? Opening up with the sprint is generally not the great, like it's a good thing to do to make sure you have a good opening hand. But a lot of times that means they don't have like a very obvious jam on the table here. That being said, sometimes it's good just to open with the sprint to give yourself like the best options. But that means they're probably not jamming in a remote server this turn. Maybe we'll see like a wall to wall in a remote server, maybe ice on R&D. And oh, there you go. Okay, so slower start. We can start up as well, which is fantastic. Any turn the corp doesn't force you to do something is a turn that you can clear, uh, very cleanly just set up, which is perfect because we like to set up. Prognostic Q loop, red team, love that. Red team, really good, fun pressure, especially when combined with flip switch. You can just kind of hit that button and go. I oh, will take both of these. 
So we want to get down one hardware a turn so we could consider doing prognostic Q loop or we could just do flip switch bravado on HQ. Again, we're a criminal. We want to make sure that they have some sort of pressure uh, that we're exerting pressure. So they're forced to slow down and res their stuff. Uh, I think that's fine. We're likely to hit an after on HQ. Well, let's see what they got in there. They mulligan. They sprinted, though, and I don't think they'd sprint into agendas. So I'm actually going to uh, go ahead and um, bravado R&D because I'm pretty sure if they had a lot of agendas, the sprint would put them away. So they're probably more likely to be in R&D. Being said, it's good to run HQ. See what they got. And we install their one hardware turn for as it's a whoredom. I'm not going to flip switch that. You can get a credit back on two credits. They probably can't fire HQ. The only ice they can largely res on HQ is an ice wall. So I'm going to risky dirty laundry HQ. There's a small, small chance that, oh, we got it. So like a lot of their ice, they're resing like Afshar and Aket are three strengths. So the only thing here I'd expect to be is, a, is an ice wall. Trickle light. Wow. Okay. Full, full fast advance. So they're going to advance their ice, pull the tokens off the to score from hand, and they can do that on few credits. It's two credits to advance a card or to fast advance an agenda. So we're going to, um, we're going to have to keep the pressure on. We're going to have to try and prioritize getting as many accesses as more than like setting up for a late game, which probably won't exist. So we'll keep that in mind. Red team is kind of good for what we want. We want to force them to res. Drawing twice, so HQ pressure now. They need to click for a credit so, so they can res the ice on HQ. Looks like they didn't get there. Uh, here, I think we can do red team. Probably hit the prognostic too. Server one, likely a spin doctor. Maybe even a wall to wall, but here the red team coming down. We didn't need the prognostic. It's nice to see the top of the deck. Maybe we'll have some money here to spend it. It's a boomerang. That's perfect. We need to pull it. We can always pull it for uh, three credits off the top of the deck. Red team. Run, on, run HQ. Get some money. Good stuff. Read server. That's a trick of light again. Uh, we could run server one, see what it is. I'm pretty sure it's a wall to wall or a spin doctor. We can't really run again. We could also try red team for archives. If that is a spin doctor, maybe it pops it. Uh, do we need the money right now? I think we would want to install the boomerang clicklessly. Like we want to do that. I guess we're not drawing, but if we do that on their turn, it's only a two credit install. We don't really need the revolver. I think we'll check server one. I'm pretty sure it's a spin doctor though. If that's the case, we could just red team archives if there's an agenda in there. Yeah, there you go. So we, I think we should have red teamed archives. It seems like there's an agenda in there likely. Uh, and that would have got us the three credits. Also, if we did the other order, now they have more cards in hand. So it's sometimes easier to hit an agenda. Uh, you know, they drew into unknown cards, especially because they probably didn't have a lot of agendas in their starting HQ. But they have a lot of work here to do. Take some money to set up the trickle light. Mind you, their first advancement gets them credits. Maybe a hostile here gives us the bad publicity we need, but it gives them the credits they need to res. Yeah, there you go. So bad publicity works super well with prognostic Q loop. So what I'm going to do here is on their turn, and mind you, they have to discard a lot. We don't mind checking archives when it gives us three credits. But we just need to get our draw engine. We need masterwork. It's so important. So I'm going to reveal here, install boomerang. I'm going to install it on, I think, R&D. I'm worried they're not going to res HQ. Okay. So we draw once. We get a, a revolver, which is fine. And now we can face check HQ. And we'll see two fresh cards with prognostic. And if we just run into an end the run, we can use the bad publicity to fire the prognostic Q loop. The Wayland matchup is a bit tricky because it's fast. But at least you have very good ways to use their... um. Your bad publicity, like getting a masterwork off the top. Perfect. Gets our card draw too. That's really quite good. Let's see if they were for nine credits. Resing an archer here. No further action. I think that's an archer. Either that or it's like something like a Stavka. So I'm going to use our bad publicity. We'll reveal the top. It's a masterwork. We'll install that for one credit. Draws a card. Read server. We need an agenda here. There you go, Atlas. Nice. Three, two agendas are super important to steal in this matchup for sure. Uh, we can't dirty laundry with red team because they're both... Uh, take a click to spend a run so it doesn't really work we have this twinning burning a hole in our pocket we need to get down our our um need to get down either a prepaid voice pad or more likely a chesva or a mantle so we'll boomerang this again i don't know if they're going to build a remote server it's always good to have a pocket boomerang in hand it's an ice wall that's important to know shuffle that back thank you i don't know whether we want to red team archives i don't think so i think we just want to draw up i don't think they threw out agendas there a second twinning we're playing two of these maybe we don't need to I don't know. We could probably spend three influence somewhere else. I would love a Stargate on this board state more than anything. Not that it works well with the red team, but very impactful card, especially in this matchup. I think the MU is the issue because we have so many programs that we charge up. 15 credits in government subsidy. We have to make sure we don't die to punitive. That's been happening a fair bit. Second ice on R&D makes me think there's nothing in there. But they haven't set up trick of light. I still think we can just charge HQ with the red team. We'll again use our bad publicity. There's two unknown cards on the top of the deck. We have no hardware to uh, install here. I think sometimes we draw for once to get a hardware. To get down with masterwork. Okay. Well, let's go. T400. We'll install that with bad publicity. That's fine. Gives us a hand size. We're safe to double punitive. I really think this is a Stavka. So I'm going to use prognostic. Reveal. Install T400. Draw. Oh, it's a Portum. I thought they weren't resing. Um, can they have a credit? 
I still think we were going to do that no matter what. Can they have a credit? Is the question. Paperbag's going to take a while to get up to speed. Yeah, they can have a credit. We're not going to flip switch that. Surprised they didn't raise the last turn, but that makes a lot of sense. We should have paid attention. It's because they wanted to play the government subsidy. So that means that it wasn't necessarily an ice that was bad for that board state because they wanted to hoard their credits. And so be it. Now, hoard him. It's going to take us a while to get up to hyperbaric. Normally, we charge this with things like Chesva. Red team, dirty laundry. I think we might be okay. The red teams are good, like surprisingly cool in this list, especially because it's a good way to get value and everything at the same time. We have one dirty laundry. Let's get up something different. Okay. What do we do here? We're going to discard one card for sure. We've already installed the hardware. Oh, actually, no, no, we have bad publicity. It's not bad publicity. We have extra hand size. We don't need to discard. So I think we're just going to dirty laundry archives. We're safe to double punitive. So even if we hit a 5 3 in, in archives, we'll be okay. Otherwise, we can get our hyperbaric down and then slowly charge it with bad publicity, which is actually probably the play. But I think we do that next turn. I think we do hyperbaric run archives and start using the bad publicity on this. Yeah, okay, let's just get some money. Okay, so they threw in an Afshar, surprising, and an Akat. Afshar on HQ is a lot of times is a fair bit better than the Hordem. Uh, it's a bit different when we're playing hyperbaric, but we can't break both the subroutines on this. Here they probably start advancing up. Whoa, into remote server. We can deal with everything besides barriers. Uh, we know that they have an ice wall though, so that's kind of an issue. Last click draw, you generally don't want to do that because they could have drawn a better card for the remote server or for in front of the remote server. We have a 1 in 10 chance basically of hitting a boomerang. I'm just going to go yellow off the top. I don't think we know these cards. Docklands pass. Yeah, sure. Draws a card. Flip switch. Okay. Fine. I'm really worried that that is the ice wall. At least at that point, we can bravado it to see the top card of our deck. And if it's a sentry or a code gate, we can come back. Uh, will we masterwork to get the flip switch? Let's look at the prognostic first. I think that's probably more important. It's a Chesva into Chesva. Okay. Well, will we draw Chesva? Yeah, I think so. Because I don't think we're installing a hardware this turn. Got two flip switch. Oh, mind you, we're bravadoing this remote server. It is the ice wall. That's a real shame because we're going to be stopped by this little barrier. Uh, I guess that's firing. We know the next card in our deck is a Chesvo, which is not particularly exciting. We have twinning into uh, hyperbaric into Chesvo, which again, it's a lot of installs here. Like we can't click compress these installs. We can click compress the install off the top of the deck, though. So I think there's a chance that we just are red team archives. Um, we install the hyperbaric first from the hand. I think we do install hyperbaric, install the twinning, and then we red team archives, get the Chesva down. Yeah. Yeah. Let's set up a bit. Above the law would be a bit bad, but it's a one of. What can you do? That would trash our twinning. Okay, so triggers here. So we're going to do prognostic Q loop, install the Chesva, use the Chesva to place a power counter on that. So it charges the twinning, get three credits. We're, we're coming for you, HQ. <laughs> Our Docklands Pass is coming for you. Just give us some time to set up, please. It's just a wall to wall. That's totally fine. But this is the cheapest way for them to get advancements. Mind you, in, in some ways, it's like, I guess it's not too big of a deal, but it, built to last only gets the value if the card that they're advancing is unadvanced. So whatever. They're not clicking for credit. It's still tempo positive. Uh, they draw a card off the wall to wall. Gain credit. So a lot of cards in HQ. We definitely want to get through the wall to wall. We can do it this turn. I think we can just drop red team go. And the top of our deck is unknown, so prognostic Q loop is in a good spot. Still have a bad publicity as well. Okay, second ice. At this point, we have to start respecting things like Stavka and, and, uh, and uh, other trash stuff, so we might want to get our revolver down. Actually, no, we have flip switch. What do we care? Yeah, we don't care, do we? Red team can come down. Four credits. We can just run HQ. We'll have uh, seven with bad publicity plus two on Chesva. That seems like it's probably enough, but I've done very little math. We can see a lot of cards from HQ. Top two cards of the stack. It's a bravado to sure gamble. So two events, a lot of events in this deck. It kind of does jam out the prognostic. It's a naquette. We can't deal with that. I don't want to give them a free advancement. So we are going to just charge our hyperbaric. Oh, that's actually messed up because I think we, uh, we should have one credit fewer because the bad publicity. Because the bad publicity goes first. So we actually ended up making money on that. This shouldn't work like that. And then we'll flip switch out. Okay, so it's Sure Gamble Bravado. Uh, we definitely need to draw through our deck. None of those cards are really helping us. And we're not checking server four. Maybe a spin doctor. I would be very surprised if that was an agenda on the table, but if so, well played. And we want to clear the top of our deck so we can always um it's not a great red team, but eventually we'll be. We just need to find a cleaver. And we're getting there. Hyperbaric's doing its thing, finally. Once we get through these hordums for two credits, that's kind of nice. Wall to wall, draw a card, gain a credit. Again, trickle light should be online right now because they can advance the Hordem one more time. Yeah, there you go. They might just trickle light here. Uh, we can always pretend we can stop with Clot off the top of the prognostic Q loop. Something you have to respect, but uh, in this deck, no, not so much. We don't have one. Yeah, they're going to trickle light. 
Now that does reset the, the clock here on the trick of light, taking the two counters off the Hordem. Not that the two counters on Hordem do anything, the third one does matter, but we're gonna break the subroutines. So let's see. Above the law, oh no. I'm surprised they took down the red team. The twinning is way more powerful. We do have a, a couple uh, events in hand. They don't know that. But uh, yeah, the other one is, um, this is how they lose. This is multi-axis, which is a, the most powerful thing against this sort of deck. Like we have bad publicity in Chesva. I don't know if the credits are that important. Let's slow you down. Uh, I think we're okay with it. Last second top of the deck. Okay, cool. We lost a credit to that. That's fine. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. We definitely want to break down the wall to wall, but we can't really right now. We kind of force, want to force them to res here, so I'd be pretty happy just doing a uh, sure gamble bravado and R&D. In fact, I don't even know if we have to sure gamble. We could just bravado R&D. Oh no, we kind of need some amount of money for this. And if we see the top three cards of the deck, that's good. We know there's a class act on top of the deck, so let's draw first. So we do sure gamble, then we can bravado R&D. This means we have, uh, yeah, sure gamble to Chesva. Okay, not amazing. And if this is a sentry, we can just run away with the, our last flip switch. But yeah, we need to get this thing down stat. Another outcat. Do we want to get them a free advance to it? I don't know if they're running Stavka. I'm glad that they're on two credits. They'll be on three credits next turn with wall to wall. So I think we're just going to do... Oh, I messed the Chesva. Apparently it's not a credit. It's a recurring credit. Yeah, that's slightly different. Um, okay. So we're going to go ahead and charge this. That's the easier way to do it. Will this actually take away the bad publicity? Yeah. We have no other use for the bad publicity. No. Uh, that's fine. The twinning is good. They're going to get an advancement and a credit. Will they be on four credits? Oh, no, actually, no, no, no. We'll flip switch. We'll flip switch. Actually, sorry. Sorry. I'm flip switching. I forgot about that. We were going to flip switch up for sure. All right. And we'll just get on the class act. We haven't used our ability yet. So this is going to do some good drawing. Um, We don't have much in our hand. Our blueberry diesel might get into a cleaver. But once we have a cleaver or a boomerang, we're blowing these servers much wider open. All right. So they're going to be on, I believe, three credits now after the wall to wall. And they, I don't know, we could have seen a two trick of lights in the hand, but they have to start advancing their thing slowly. Well, ice wall, it's getting advanced with the wall to wall, ice to wall to wall to wall. Sprint allows them to dig for their combo pieces, shuffle away some awkward three agenda, three point agendas they might have in their list. But we need, we have multi-axis on HQ. We have multi-axis on R&D or HQ, and we just can't get in there. So we're going to have to get, there's three boomerangs in 18, one cleaver. So four and 18, we have a good chance of uh, dieseling into the thing we want, especially with the additional class act draw. So here we're trying to get three cards from HQ if we can, and then like three cards from the top of R&D. Also, once we get our mantle down, as we can use that to, um, in theory with the hyperbaric, it's awkward because you have to pay a credit. But if we use the mantle recurring credit on the corpse turn, that is us using a recurring credit on the corpse turn. Uh, so we get twinning faster. Just credit, credit. They're on five credits. Cool. Uh, I don't know if we have to prognostic here. I think we're comfortable on money that we could consider it. Because once we're like set up, we run centrals for free, right? Like Cleaver Chesva, we're good. I'm going to hit this button. The pinhole threading. Oh, that deals with the wall to wall. That's nice. That's that's cute. We could also install the masterwork clicklessly mid run to get a free card draw. That might be okay. But the most important thing is card draw. I don't know if we need to deal. Okay, we don't want the prognostic, so that solves that. All right, one of these goes to the bottom. It's going to be the boomerang is going to stay in hand. So here we have some work to do. We're going to do sure gamble. We're going to run HQ and then we're going to pinhole threading. That's our turn. So we're going to run HQ. We'll do masterwork first. Install this, draws a card. Uh, we install that for free, getting a charge on there. Uh, we put it, it doesn't, the order here doesn't matter. Oh, wow. Pen weave would be nice. Getting the credits down actually is really important. It's just a bit too slow. If we had this in earlier, not that we're getting HQ runs. Top card is sack, Cleaver Begalter. Okay, so we also know that we can just pull out the Cleaver when we're running R&D if we want to not pinhole through pen weave. And that's probably better. So continue encounter. Boomerang that. We want to make sure that we pull the Cleaver before we shuffle. But we need to remember to do that. A continue approach. Continue encounter. Uh, fully break Hordem. We don't want to give them the credit. So before we breach the server, we'll use Prognostic to reveal. Install the Cleaver. So that doesn't get shuffled away. This thing's important. And then we'll breach. And we're going to see two cards of Docklands Pass. And we're going to see two more of the Twinning. So we're going to see four cards. Because we want to make sure there's no agendas in here. There you go. There you go. Sick. Just shuffle the deck. We have one click left. Seven credits. We could pinhole threading down the wall to wall. I think we can just run R&D. It costs one real credit. And we can lock the top three cards there. So then it's really hard for them to win the game. Uh, I think that sounds good. We could be a bit greedy and get the Chesva down. We can also get the pan weave down running R&D, but it's not that important on this board. So let's try and just win the game. Seeing three cards is important. Install hardware. Um, no, we're going to use our bad pub. No, that's fine. We don't need to do this. So Cleaver breaks two barrier subroutines for one. 
or through. I don't know what server four is. I think it's a spin doctor. So they might shuffle in some non-agendas here. This we break for two. And we know they have a trick of light. And actually, because they have a trick of light, trashing the wall to wall is important, but I'm pretty sure we, we swept HQ pretty well. And we're going to swap the top of the deck. There you go. Azef, Azef, Atlas. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> 11 agenda points. Uh, I found some agendas. That was cool. All right. We were just short of getting our breakers down. I think a mutual favor would be reasonable for this list. I also think there's some good reasons why you want to shuffle the deck. Sometimes you just have two events on the top of the deck that prognostic is getting stuck behind. It was really cool. You see what this list does? You need to plan your turns a bit. I feel like we did a better job remembering the top of the deck, which is super important. But um, against the faster matchups, it's a bit hard because it takes you a while to set up. But you want to minimize your setup, set up clicklessly as much as possible. Spend your credits on both turns to get the masterwork draw and the as trigger. Uh, important. Oh, super cool. Hey, thanks you too. That was a fun one. All right, let's get another one in. All right, we're back in startup. Unfortunately, I thought I had finished this video a week ago um, before I went on vacation, but the last gameplay on, on review, uh, the audio was a bit busted, so we had to scrap that. Uh, it was a good game. Apologies, Izzy. It was actually a banger of a game. So we're back here a week later after I filmed the intro and put most of the video together. And with that hindsight, we've actually changed the deck a wee bit. We dropped the twinning and we're playing a single paladin Puemo, which is nice. We have a lot of installables and it allows us to use credits on the opponent's turn to charge the twinning. It's really good. And then we dropped, I think, the two uh, revolvers to play two mutual favors, which I think this deck appreciates a fair bit. Now we're in startup. We're playing against building a better world. Not an idea I really like. I kind of find it boring. And I don't know if there's much that the deck inherently does besides uses those credits to like capitalize on punitive counter strike or going really fast. We're okay into punitive counter strike. It takes us a while to set up. So the early game is a bit volatile. Um, but once we get past that hump, we have clickless card draw. We can have six hand size. There's a lot that we can do for ourselves. Now this opening hand is like not the worst. The mutual favor is not that valuable. The pinhole is not that valuable, but a prognostic prepaid is fine. We don't have a, an event in our hand that costs money. I'm going to mulligan this. We want to open up with like a sure gamble, a uh, prognostic, or not a prognostic. Prognostic would be good, but a masterwork would be great. And because this is Wayland and they're probably running um, hostile takeover, we get bad publicity, which is really easy for our deck to use with either prognostic or masterwork, as long as we have good ways to run and make money at the same time. But I honestly don't know what building a better world does in startup. Maybe we're going to see some of the new ice. Uh, there's some good Wayland sentries like Stavka and stuff like that. And that could be an issue for us. It's a similar hand, but this is better. We got our economy. We have our masterwork. And uh, I'm not too excited about having a hyperbaric, but it allows us to um, deal with like a Hordem early or something like that. Red level clearance, modal card is a transaction, mind you. They get a credit on every transaction. I wish this ability, which came from the original core set, was a bit more interesting. It's not something you really consider. You just jam all the transactions in a deck. I wish it was like two credits, the first transaction a turn, something like that. So you planned your turns more. This is just like transaction goes burr, whatever. But they drew two cards and gained a click and it was free. Uh, that's nice. This is a two influence card, mind you. In terms of the other transactions in the format, we're expecting predicted planogram, of course, hedge fund and government subsidy. So we want to keep the pressure on so they're never at 10 credits. Mind you, this deck is good at getting at 10 credits when they, um, you know, that was a clickless three credits. Like, yeah, take that carpe diem. But we'll see what they do here. And if it comes to punitive, they have a full set of three point agendas. They have SDS drone employment and send a message. So this could just be an atlas on the table. The question here is whether we do prepaid into gamble to get money up front, but then we lose the credit on the masterwork. It's kind of a wash either ways. I think we just do Sure Gamble to Masterwork for the card draw. Okay, and then next turn we can install that draw card and again play the Sure Gamble. So that seems fine. We can drop once here. We're eight to eight. We could consider running server one. Um, now that's if it's a trebuchet, it's a bit annoying, but we want to force them to res here and we want to have a click left in case there's something that gives us a tag. Install a hardware. I don't think we want to. We want to keep our money up. It's a Pharos. Oh, wow. Okay, that does give us a tag. Are we worried about a single tag on this turn? No. Uh, now they spend all their money. They can't score out an agenda. They could res slowly, uh, like a regolith, which I think might be part of their game plan. But this thing, uh, that's fine. This is something we have to boomerang and then clear the tag, though. Three subroutines are awkward. If we don't clear the tag, what can happen? Their predictive planograms are actually pretty good. I think I'm going to respect the predictive, predictive planogram. If they retribution the masterwork, I don't really care. Um, but uh, yeah, we have to watch out. Now with one credit again. Can't be Nico, can't be Marilyn. Could be credit into regolith. They've played two of the red level clearance. Oh, it's a wall to wall. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. This thing does get bigger. Uh, we're going to boomerang this. There's no way we're cleavering this, but that's something we want to deal with sooner than later. Hopefully we can pinhole thread this because uh, the Pharos actually is annoying, but they're not icing up centrals. So we want to get down our Chezvas as soon as possible to be able to run centrals and build board state at the same time. All right, extract just to gain. Oh yeah, that's a tra transaction. Just four credits, whatever. So here we could run HQ, which they have drawn, right? 
We can install this for two credits, will be a four, and then we can still sure gamble. That seems fine. We can't trash anything in HQ. Could just draw here too. Bravado needs ice, so we can't Bravado central servers. Uh, yeah, let's just get some click compression here. So install this, draw a card. Oh, red team's good when they don't ice their stuff up. Send a message. Okay. So now we have to watch out for punitive, which are almost definitely on. They don't have a target for send a message, which is sick. So we just want to get as many credits as we can. Having, they can do two punitives, which would be six damage. So having th three cards in hand is important. Having four or five doesn't change the math. So the most we can do to get credits here is either bravado for three credits and then have a tag or just click for credit. We also have a link and punitive counter-strike is a trace five. So they have to hit two of them. I think it's really difficult, but maybe not a poss impossible. I think the best thing we have going for us is that they will not be on 10 credits because if they were on 10 credits, they could do government subsidy to gain six into punitive punitive and then we'd be in a in a right mess. But this is okay. In here, we can get the red team down and we definitely want to draw into more hardware to get installed with Masterwork and go from there. It's drawing up here. Wall to wall is getting more advancements on this. They are drawing cards, so they haven't seen a fair few cards. And the big thing about punitive is we have to... Uh, the amount, the time over value of punitive falls off at a certain point. Once we're in game point, it's less relevant. So getting early agendas is good. Extract. Government subsidy. It's huge money. Are they value punitiving? I don't think so. Second eyes. Okay, so we survived a single punitive. Feels good. Now, if we hit an SDS drone deployment, we can't steal it. But let's steal into hardware. The memory diamond is like not bad. Uh, the mantle is more impactful when we have... Um, either the twinning or the prognostic. So I'll take the memory diamond. Oh, well, there, there it is. So here, what can we do? We can install the twinning. Sorry, I think we just installed the red team run HQ. And we install the, the memory diamond on the way. We've already technically used our as ability when we install the red team. So this is credit negative, kind of. And they're just going to like, we want to just see the top of our or HQ. It looks like they're going to jam in the remote server, which is probably correct. A Kion Bay grid, something like that would be a problem. Let's all hardware. This draws a card. Oh, there's a prognostic. Give us a bad publicity, please. And the mantle is actually nice to keep because of SDS drone deployment. And it's a Colossus. A Sentry gives tags and trashes programs. If we don't have programs, it's not the best res until they triple advance it. And we're only on six credits. But mind you, we have uh, nine credits that we can unlock next turn, potentially. Now, if they're on 5-3 agendas and they want to jam into the remote server, a lot of times they're not going to be able to uh, ice up centrals. This deck could be on big deal if it is a big money deck, which is a way for them to fast advance 5-3 agendas for five influence and 17, technically 18 credits. But here we could like twinning. Uh, I guess we have no way to use our, our credits to charge the twinning barring uh, finding events. I think since I did the American Continentals, my um, my Jinteki.net, the numbers are smaller, right? Like I feel like I, I reset some of the font stuff and I don't like this as much. I feel like classically the numbers used to be bigger. I'm going to look into that. Server one looks like an upgrade. So a Kion Bay grid means it's going to cost us some extra money. Colossus maybe on HQ, Colossus on R&D, that's fine, I think. Uh, if we have a boomerang, we're feeling a bit better. We could see an offcat or an offshore here. We might just want to take a turn to set up. And we can always red team archives to install the prognostic. That seems fine. I guess it's three credits and a card draw. Flip switch is perfect. Because now we could like flip switch bravado HQ. Is that worth doing? We do flip switch. They have two cards in hand. I don't think we know anything about them. We can install the flip switch during the run for two credits. It doesn't draw a card. And then we can bravado. I think we can just set up a bit more. Okay. Well, 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 well. I don't want to install a program because then we have to worry about the trash program subroutine. So we're going to try and hold that off as long as we can. Uh, I think we can just install the twinning click for credits. Um, and then it's not like we're going to charge this quickly. That's kind of the issue. This puts a bit more pressure on central server. Maybe it has an impact on the game. But until we draw a Chesva, there's the Kayambe. Okay, so we don't have to remember the text. It gets an advancement token, and then you have to do two credits for each ice that has an advancement token on it. Mind you, that doesn't have to be advanceable ice. So it looks like this ice here might not actually be advanceable. Because, well, they wall to walled here, and maybe that means that's the Colossus more than anything else. And the Colossus gets better subroutines, but never more than two. All right, they're drawing up. So we definitely want to hit centrals here. Subsidy, they're on 22 credits. Again, punitive is alive and well. We can get six hand size, though. I don't know if they've drawn enough to see double punitive. Mind you, wall to wall has been drawing, I think, since turn one. And we want to get the agendas out of hand before they hit the remote server. That's totally true. And we'll get a twinning charge with a prepaid. Ice on archives. Okay. Red team respect. I, I don't mind that so much. Okay. We could prognostic. I want them to score a hostile. A lot of times they're on two hostiles if they're on mostly 5-3 agendas. So what do we do here? We either install the boomerang during the run. I think we're okay with the boomerang. I don't think there's a lot of three subroutine ice. Uh, there's no archer yet. They haven't scored an agenda. So let's go ahead and go HQ uh, with this. HQ. 
We're going to do the mass work first. Install this. Top two cards of stack. We have a dirty laundry and a red team. Okay, so some run-based economy. All right, they can res now if they like. It is the Colossus, which we are perfectly boomeranging. Wait, I didn't install the boomerang? <laughs> oh my. We were meant to install the boomerang there, not the prognostic. Yeah, that was meant to be the boomerang because we were pretty sure that was Colossus anyways. Uh, so the best we can do is either take a tag. I think taking a tag is fine. We don't need to flip switch that. We can clear the tag with a flip switch. That's fine. We have to live with that one because we saw the top of our deck and we saw their ice, of course. But yeah, we, we expected that to be the Colossus. It's fine. We can clear this, click this and clear the tag. But we don't want to jack out because we want the axis. We can see two cards here. And on top of that, um, we get one more credit with the bravado. So it's fine. It's really not that big of a deal. This is trash a program and give the runner a tag. No programs are trash. Cool. So we could see two cards here. I don't know if we're that excited to do that. Seems like a fast way to die punitive. It's a clearing house. Whoa. Wow. It's going to be annoying. All right, we're in seven credits. They're on 16, mind you, just free money, I guess. Uh, we can always red team back and float tags. I don't want to do that. We want to protect the twinning for sure. They'll drop once. Uh, there's a red team on top of our deck, which I'd love a bad publicity here. I think we can just clear the tag with flip switch. Actually, I think their flip switch value is actually pretty strong in this matchup if they're running ice like this or archers and stuff like that. So I'm going to keep the flip switch around. We can just clear the tag. Um, our money's not amazing, but next turn we can like dirty laundry boomerang, keep drawing through. And uh, we're going to draw the red team, which is a bit annoying. If we have a class act, we get a bit more value or choice, excuse me, of what we draw, which is obviously great. Punitive is like so popular in startup and I've had to learn to like really respect it in just about every deck. Because it's one of the very few alternate win conditions that startup has, which is a big difference when standard, where I think there's a fair few win alternate win conditions. But barring just scoring agendas on a remote server, is like PMIV is huge. And like HB does it so well with Vacheron. Wayland does it good with SDS drone deployment. Uh, NBN does it fantastic with Bologna. It's just Jinteki that doesn't punitive very well. Second eyes, okay, that's a bit of a bummer. We have no idea what that could be. But now also the Colossus does not end the run, but it trashes a uh, installed resource and a program and two tags. So you definitely want to boomerang that if anything. The question is whether we dirty laundry. I think we do. Charges the twinning. And locking the top of R&D is nice. I don't know if they have an agenda. They could consider jamming here if they did. We could draw once for the red team. I think that's fine. Because we can see two fresh cards. Oh, we would have drawn it anyways with the boomerang. So actually, maybe not correct. But we'll run R&D. Charging our twinning. Uh, we'll do the masterwork first because we're going to draw a card. No chess was yet. Uh, we'll do the... Order here, technically you should see the cards first, but it's not like we're going to change what we're doing. Oh, Paladin's good. Docklands pass, okay. HQ pressure and another masterwork. Mind you, you can overinstall your cards um, to get those clickless card draws. And now we're boomeranging this. There's m very few ice we can't boomerang through cleanly. Uh, Pharos, for sure. If they're on envelopment, you know, that has a couple and they're on subroutines. Now, mind you, that just ends the run, so I don't think we mind too much. Our boomerang will stay there. Oh, it's another Colossus. Cool. They're going to triple advance that eventually. This is where we just need to put enough pressure on, but like we died of a single punitive, right? Uh, no, we can get up to six hand size. Let's see a couple cards. If we steal three points, we lose. Kayambe, that's fine. Hordem. Kayambe is actually not unique, which is a problem. So they could put that on central servers and a Winchester. Oh, man. Punitive decks run so few agendas. These games like just absolutely, um, I forget what's on top, uh, kind of grind along. Wait, no, yes, don't hit no there. <laughs> okay, we definitely want to get Paladin down. We're drawing into unknown cards. It's good enough. It gives us a uh, play next turn. We don't have a boomerang. Uh, we could just like run through the Colossus and clear the tag. Haven't seen a Chesva yet, though. They drew into a Kayamba. Kayamba is actually probably worth trashing in retrospect. I forgot that it's not unique. It's strange that this card is not unique. And yeah, this card's also banned in, in, in standard, mind you. This is the sort of matchup where I love Stargate more than I do like the twinning. Now, our MU is a bit more full than this classically, but the idea is that we have more control over the game. There have been so many matchups where we're just like, oh, we're playing against HB Fast Advance. What can we do? Just hope we get enough accesses. And like, I don't love that. It doesn't feel great. It also allows you to deal with Vacheron, Punitive. There's a lot of ways that it allows you to, to play the game, uh, have a bit more control of the game. There's a planogram. Gain four credits for a single click. That's fine. We are taxing out their money. A bit. Like, they've resed a fair bit of ice. There's the Kayambe, so... There's going to be five credits there. Like this is feels where it's really rough. It's where this becomes a total grind of the game. And I think the right thing nine out of ten times is just to get enough money and run server one. Right? Like just get enough money. 
All right, so our opponent, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna ice up everything, get everything to like two seven strength ice, then eventually push out onto Kayambe, maybe a mana garm. And that's gonna take like another seven to 10 turns. The best thing is we haven't seen a spin doctor and they're drawing every turn with the wall to wall, like HQ pressure is like a legitimate thing. Like that's something we have to consider. So I think we're just gonna draw and set up. Like this is not gonna be particularly exciting, I don't think. String is good, it charges our twinning. That's that's cute. Uh, not much else to do here. We install this, we draw a card, whatever. Uh, and then we'll just do that to charge. Oh, we have to discard a card here. Um, oh, no, we don't. Six, hand size, sick. And uh, we're just going to try and get more money than they... Yeah, there's a Kayambi on RD, no surprise. So next turn we can flush HQ as long as we can get into HQ, which currently we have shown no way to get through anything. <laughs> uh, if we hit into a Hordum, it's actually like really quite bad. Luckily, we have Flip Switch, so we can just be a bit aggressive. Um, but the Colossus here is a problem. That's for sure. We can't let this fire. So we have three Boomerangs and 24. Uh, we have technically a Bugalter, which uh, breaks us for three. Wait, three? No. No. For six for strength. Six credits. It breaks it for six. Okay. Yeah, we have a Bugalter that breaks Colossus for six. That's not great. But yeah, no, this is where I much more appreciate more jammy Netrunner than this like slow. I'm going to advance my ice up. So HQ is definitely where the pressure needs to be. If we install Class Act, we'll draw a fair bit. We can't use the Paladin credits. We want to definitely try and charge the twinning every single turn. So let's try and at least install something that's not connection. That's something. Oh, we need to put something with it. So we could install the Hyperbaric for one credit. It's like kind of unfortunate to have a program installed because then the trash program subroutines are a bit scary. That being said, like we have all this stuff. Like we have two flip switches, so whatever. And this allows us to panic. Yeah, this is just something to install. I think we're just going to do credit, class act for three, draw five or four. Double chess is good. So here, how do we do install this? Like we have two boomerangs in hand. Uh, if we had one boomerang on top of the deck, we can do something here. But I think now we have to face check HQ. We also have something we want to install chess with so we can discard something if we hit an SDS drone deployment. Uh, we're going to bravado HQ this turn. We'll install a chess with so like at least we can buffer hyperbaric if we have to jack out. Red level just to, to draw. I wonder if there's going to be something in archives here. Like we could check, consider checking archives with the red team. The issue there is like we could lose to punitive. Uh, how easy is it to lose to punitive there? Not too easy. We have six cards in hand. They have to triple punitive us. They only have 13 cards. We have nine in the link. Plus we're going to red team. I want them to res on archives. I don't mind resing, having them res on archives. Uh, cost them money. Like I, so far we haven't seen any ice that costs less than six credits. So maybe we've just seen the big stuff. But if they res spend like five credits on archives, sign me up. Sick. And they did mass draw. So like I want to run HQ. So we're going to do Chesva. A little bravado or archives. After we uh, boomerang it, I reckon. Yeah. We want to always keep one hand in hand, two in deck if we can. They have to discard two cards here. Again, they could discard agendas. Then it'd be a problem. Actually, it might be worth installing a Chesva first before running archives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then we can actually at least install the boomerang. That's fine. But like, yeah, not a lot of interaction in this matchup. This is just like slow posturing. And there's a chance like the stuff they res on the remote server, maybe that's an ice wall. If that's an ice wall, like fine, we'll boomerang it. But then we have to boomerang this. Man, Cleaver being a... Uh, I wonder if I'd rather play Corroder. Classically, you don't sweat the small stuff. Or sorry, the big stuff you boomerang. Okay, Chesva coming in for one. All right. Uh, I think that's it. We'll boomerang archives. Get this counter. Archives. Uh, beginning of turn, masterwork. Install hardware. One less. Uh, using these. Draws a card. We'll look at the top of the deck first. It is a Docklands Pass or Prognostic. We don't need the Prognostic. We'll take the Docklands. So we know a Bugalter on the top and a Pinhole. All you. So Bugalter's good. We can install that mid-run. Um, and that allows us to deal with the Colossus for like a lot of money. So not great. Now not resin here is actually I think a pretty legitimate thing for, for them because it keeps a Boomerang stranded. Uh, okay. Let's see if there's agendas in here. It's another Pharaoh's and another wall-to-wall. -wall. That makes a lot of sense. We're on 13 credits there, 14. So how do we pressure HQ? We could red team HQ here to flush out three cards. Actually, four cards if we get the Dawkins pass down. Um, that'd be cool. Now, of course, we can't deal with this ice here or this ice here. So that's less than cool. But I think we just want to get as much value as we can off of um off of boomerang on archives. Like I think we install the Chesva and we like red team archives. Yeah. I think that's fine. Oh, it has to be a server we haven't ran. Okay, this actually feels a bit worse. And I don't want to play this. Could have installed both of those, couldn't we? Now if we run, we can force a res, hopefully. The thing is, like, they have no reason to res. So if they don't res, we can always, like, chess into the hyperbaric and jack out. That doesn't feel amazing. I think we just click for credit here. 
Yeah, that was an ugly turn. That shouldn't have been that like that. Oh, we don't have to throw out six hand size. I keep forgetting. Thanks, Janet. But that was not a smooth turn. I think that turn could have gone way better if we planned it out a bit better. Kayambi is to access, right? Not to make the run? Yeah, approaches the server. Okay. So it's like when they breach. The breach is the same timing, I think, as Manic Arm or Anoetic, which maybe they're on that. Like we've seen literally no influence. Oh, no, we've seen six on red teams and one off the predictive. But we need a. I think that was a turn we definitely should run HQ. They ran a silly amount. Uh, drew a silly amount, excuse me. We should have ran HQ. That also might be a, t a turn where we wanted to keep one credit on the Paladin Poimo. Because we know we have a Begalter on the top of our deck, which is something we can consider installing. It's like not necessary. Um, but you could consider it. Yeah, I think we'd consider it. It's like still so expensive for this. Six for strength, seven, eight. At least with the Chesvas, it's not that bad. Okay, we can run HQ. I think we'll run HQ. I don't know if we'll Dirty Laundry. I think we might as well red team. Dirty Laundry is one more credit with the prepaid. But we have no problem charging our 20 this turn. There's a chance we win. Like they've drawn so many cards. Like how do they not have the game? Okay, now they're transitioning. So that's probably an agenda. Maybe they have a big deal. But there's probably still one agenda in HQ. And we got to plan our turn better. Like I think we run archives. Uh, we could use a Chesva to install the Begalter. We'd run it with Red Team. Or Dirty Laundry, actually. Then we could run HQ. Single Advance. I don't think we care about Single Advance, do we? I think they're only on 5-3. Single Advance is not a big deal. Okay, the question is whether we pull... I don't think we pulled the Begalter here. So, we can Red Team Archives. We can use these four credits uh, to install with the Prognostic off the top of the deck. I don't know if we need the Docklands Pass this run. Yeah, let's run Archives. I'd love for them to res here. So we'll do neither of these. I should have hit yes there. We could have seen behind the Begalter. I think we might have known that card. But now we'll use the Chesva credits to install the Begalter. And I think we might want to keep the Paladin Puemo not used. Depends how like, oh, we should have Dirty Laundry there. Actually, that was a misplay by a mile. That should have been a Dirty Laundry. Beans. Um, okay, so we'll do the Prognostic now. So Begalter. I'm going to use... I'm going to keep the Paladin to charge. I think we don't have to be that like cute about this. We're more worried to pay up punitive, so I'm going to try and use all the credits we can. One face down, it's the wall to wall. They just trash their moats over. 15 credits. We have three clicks left. So here we could run HQ. We could pay 300 credits for the Colossus, and we could boomerang the innermost. I think that's fine. We should have seen the top card of the deck. I don't know what we're doing. HQ. We have to trash that. This will draw a card. Uh, okay. A uh, masterwork, sure. Pinhole, or the masterwork. Pinhole's interesting. It lets us to deal with the Kayambe, which is quite good uh, on their mode server. If we want to run their mode server, I don't know if we do. We can deal with R and D too. It could have actually been fine here to um to what's it called to boomerang the innermost and just flip switch here if we need to. Uh, mind you, the red team doesn't lose value, right? If it, the run's not successful, you just can't run that server again with red team. So now they're thinking, they have 19 credits, and they still technically need to contest the remote server. We lost one boomerang. It's a nice wall, okay. So, good. They do have cheap stuff. Our cleaver does all that well. Eventually they'll advance that. Uh, mind you, Kayambe grid is only on this server, right? Yeah, protecting the server. All right, this is going to be expensive. Way around that. Cool, six credits, sick. And here we could die to punitive, I'm pretty sure. Each server. Yeah, we could have dirty laundry there. Let's see all the cards. SDS, pay to steal. Okay. Got to watch out for punitive. But again, I think they have a couple agendas in there. Ice wall, punitive. Okay. Shuffle that back in. Okay. So we're over the punitive hump if we can survive this turn. With six cards in hand and 11 to 18 credits, I think we can survive that hump. Oh, uh, we got one more in Paladin Puemo here. All we want to do is not die. Uh, we want to keep six cards in hand so they have double punitive. So they have an ice wall and punitive. That's all we know. Uh, we have the pinhole threading, which we can use to save four credits on the Kayambe grid. That's not bad. And we have two flip switches. I think we can draw once. Credit. Oh, Cleaver is important. If they punitive away the Cleaver, I think we're sad. We'll just take some money. We have to throw out one card here. The prognostic is like the least valuable. It's sometimes good to have just because we can install it clicklessly during a run to draw. A click compression is valuable, especially with the Chesvas. We lost one Chesva, which is good money in this, in this matchup for sure. But now if they want to score in the remote server, like it's kind of slow for them to do it. This also, we have to respect again. We have to remember that clearing house is in this list and they just keep advancing it to like build that win condition like that is something we would actually want a clearing house like if they advance this to four and leave it like not this turn maybe but the following turn then we could consider just pinhole threading it okay triple advance means that they could be a neuro spike it'd be pretty unlikely considering we've seen so two four six seven eight of their influence we haven't seen a spin doctor yet we're on 12 credits we could prognostic i don't know if we know the top card of the deck i don't think we need to so if we get a cleaver down we can boomerang through hq pretty uh, efficiently the problem is we need to uh 
find a boomerang. And we have two in 16. Let's classic draw. Mantle is nice, not necessary, but it's definitely nice. I feel like drawing into a boomerang is a bit more important. Bravado Q loop. Okay. Okay, still nothing. We can always like bravado into HQ just to um, you know, get four credits. It's not amazing. We could also bravado into archives to get four credits, and then we could use our Chesva to install the Docklands Pass. Yeah, let's do that. If they res, we flip switch, whatever. Oh, excuse me. Uh, we'll do the masterwork first. This is not necessary. This is just free, and it draws us a card. Top two, masterwork into boomerang. Okay, so we know that there's a boomerang on top. If we draw once, okay, nothing to do here. Do we have a trigger here? No, I think we want to draw once. Okay, 17 to 20 credits. Okay, so we don't need the mutual favor. We could show that we have the cleaver. Installing the cleaver into an SDS is a problem. Like, we could lose the Begalter or the Hyperbaric here. Uh, we have one simul chip and 12 cards. Another good reason why we still just play the simul chip, even though recursion is not a thing. But I don't want to install the cleaver and, and get SDS. That would be bad. Uh, we've installed our hardware. So I think we just draw one more so we know we have a boomerang on top of the stack. And we can just throw out some of the stuff. Like, we don't need this. And we don't need another red team. It's actually not the worst. Mutual favor. Again, we've seen all our programs. If we lose this, we can't mutual favor it from the heap. So let's see. Again, if they continue to advance this to like clearinghouse levels, we like they get it to seven and then say like, oh, it's on you. We just pinhole threading archives with the boomerang because combat grid is only to breach a server, not to access a card in it. Yeah. Approaches a server. Excuse me. So we'll see. They could score out here. Send a message or SDS. And again, they have to play 20 to 21 agenda points. So there might be one above the law on the list or like two hostels. I think hostels are a bit easier to, to score out. That being said, they do build good remote servers. Advance, advance. Let's see what they got. This is an SES. Okay, that's why we don't install the cleaver. Let's see which program they're taking down. It's our hyperbaric, which we haven't seen any code gates yet, but that kind of tracks. And here, if they have an agenda, they could jam into server one, and that would, it's kind of bad for us. Hopefully, they just click for a credit. Hey, Drew, that's worse. Drawing last click. Like, if you're going to do that, you'd want to draw sooner in the turn just to see what that is, to see if you need to score this out. But now they could have drawn an agenda, and like, what do they do with it, right? So here, we're definitely going to install our cleaver and um, boomerang HQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see, uh, we can see almost all of HQ. So start turn. Do we have any triggers here? We know that there's a boomerang on the top of the deck. We could actually install it this turn to click list a card draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and charge up our it's winning. Let's do that. Install boomerang. Uh, use the credit off of Paladin. It gets our as and our masterwork. We'll do the masterwork first. We're going to draw one of these cards. It's a pan weave. Cool. I don't want to do that. We'll get the boomerang. And we'll install it on the Colossus. Saves us six credits. Start turn. So here we do cleaver. And I think we just dirty laundry. I don't know if we have to do the red team. This comes down. I'm only going to use one credit off of the Paladin Puemo. We don't have to worry about punitive anymore. So just keeping charges and ways to use our, our, our Paladin on their turn is really important. We'll go HQ again. So here we can install something. I don't think we need to. So we're going to skip that. Technically, we should have prognostic first because we install a card. We could draw a card that we want to install with our masterwork. So the triggering there is a bit off. Yeah, OK. Mutual into dirty laundry. OK, at least there's nothing we can install there. And we can see here uh, four cards, which is a lot. And I, we have so many charges in the 20. I don't think it's that bad of a thing to do. I wonder if they're going to actually like advance this out of range. We're going to shuffle two, so it's not like we're going to draw into mutual favor. All right. And like you saw, they card drew. They didn't jam into, uh, jam into the remote server. We've only seen nine agenda points. There's only 16 cards left in R&D. So it's very likely there's agendas here. Breach server. We'll see two additional cards. Ice wall, wall to wall, trash that. Uh, oh yeah, Chesba, nice, thanks. Punitive, knew that. Winchester, I think we knew that too. So no dice there. So it looks like the game's in R&D. How do we deal with R&D? We don't know what this is. We could install the boomerang clicklessly. Do we have enough money to deal with Kayambe? We can see three off the top. I think we can do all of this. So this is three, four, five, six, seven credits if we want to deal with it. We could obviously just pinhole threading here, but I feel like we might need the pinhole threading in the future. Maybe I'm a bit, bit too cautious. Uh, we want to just like boomerang onto this and face check into it. Now, the issue is if we could lose a boomerang here, if they overinstall or put a second ice, uh, we know they have a Winchester and an ice wall. Not exactly sure what we want to do here. Again, do we pinhole threading just to save four credits? That doesn't seem good. It costs us one this turn. I think we consider just running R&D and seeing how it goes. Again, with the boomerang, we have to install at the beginning of the run. We can't install it like mid run. So we'd have to commit to the Colossus sooner than later. It's 10 strength, mind you. And this is pay two for each advancement. Uh, sorry, not each advancement, for each advanced ice. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I think we have enough money. I wish we had another Chesva. We have one more in the list. Install hardware. We haven't installed a hardware yet, have we? 
No. Uh, keeping boomerang in hand seems important. So they could res just about anything here, but of course we have flip switch. So we're not too scared. We're expecting a Hordem. Yeah, three advanced Hordem. Uh, this is right now a problem because unless we find our simul chip, this thing we can't get through unless we boomerang it. So we're gonna have to boomerang this and then break the Colossus, which is incredibly expensive. So we're just gonna flip switch this. So unfortunately our boomerang is now probably dead. So we only have one more boomerang, which is in our hand. So not great. Uh, we can install a class act here for four credits to draw a bunch. I think that's okay. We're trying to draw into a simul chip and to a Chesva. Yeah, I think we have enough money. Cool. So we have dirty laundry. We didn't draw into any of the things we wanted. <laughs> I think there's one Chesva and five though. Yeah. Okay. Still some work to do. And we know most of their hands. So we know it's an ice wall, a punitive, a Winchester. And I think that's all we know. Seven strength. Okay. Or sorry, 11 strength. Cool, cool, cool. We're going to have to break that. Because uh, we only have one boomerang. And because it's on the innermost, not great. So now we're like, we camp again. Like, it's the same sort of thing. We just sit back and wait. Hedge fund, okay, 19 credits. Again, punitive doesn't matter. So I don't know if they have to play that hedge fund, right? Unless they can't res all their ice. I think they could. Again, it is a five credit card, so it feels good. But like, punitive is off the table. I wonder if they're also on that like 3 1 agenda that allows you to swap agenda score. At this point, it doesn't do much. Ice on HQ. They did draw one unknown. And as long as you're not jamming the remote server, I don't think we mind. Okay, cool. So probably the Winchester, probably Ice Wall on the remote server. Ice Wall is not a great install, especially for three credits. But they do get free advancements with Kion Bay Grid, so it, it does scale. Do we want a prognostic? What's left in our deck to install? It's kind of hard to tell really quickly. Um, so I'm not going to. Yeah, maybe they want that on RD. I don't know if that Ice Wall on the remote server. Yeah, with the Kion Bay. So we need our simul chip, and unfortunately for a simul chip, we need to trash one of our installed programs. So it's going to be the mantle or the chesva at the bottom. Hopefully it's the mantle. So let's filter draw. It's the mantle and the simul chip. Oh no. Uh, okay, well, let's take the simul chip. We only have a single flip switch left. That's a nice wall in R&D. It's like two more credits on the Kayambe, which is annoying. But now we have like nine cards in hand. We have to play at least three of them ideally in three clicks, which is difficult. So Dirty Laundry and Archives, not amazing. Not great. We can definitely throw a two of these, no problem. We can throw three of these out, actually. We could just click for credits if we wanted to. In theory, we want to install something. Like, that's really good with Paladin Puemo. Uh, red team comes in for one credit. It's not the worst. It's really not that bad. It's not a connection, luckily. Simon Chip draws a card. So Mantle's on the bottom of the four. So there's a Chesva in the top four somewhere. So I'm actually just going to install this to draw. It's a prognostic. Okay, so we know it's unknown <laughs> something Mantle. If we install the red team, we want to keep one on Paladin Puemo just so that we can uh, use our install in their turn. Our credits are not there. I think we might just click for credit and throw out three cards here. Yeah, I think that's fine. Oh, it was free, so we didn't even get the twinning charge. Whatever. Might be. Six cards in hand. The single T400 does so much into the punitive matchups. Cards only have a triple punitive, and that's a fair bit more money. Like, they need three times your money plus the link. All right, Simon Chip is going to get backward decoder. And ideally, we keep a Chesva. So it's like, what? Chesva Mantle? And then what's our last card? Like, this is where I can look at the list and, like, really math this out. I think it's a Blueberry Diesel. I think our deck is Blueberry Diesel. Yeah, I think it's Blueberry Diesel into uh, Chesva into Mantle. The top two are in any order. Card and server one. They only have one click left, so they're not going to score it out. That's fine. That buys us a turn. Seven strength. The question is, can we deal with this remote server? Right? Like, Cleaver, 10 strength? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so we just need to like set up and try and win off the remote server. Unless again, it could at this point with this few cards, it could just be a clearing house. Install Chesva, thank you. We can install it for free. We're gonna get a paladin back. Okay, so now we know it's blueberry into uh mantle, if I'm not mistaken. So ideally we somehow run a central server, use our Chesva credits. No, we want to get the mantle down. Okay. I think we have to let go of this boomerang. And if we boomerang archives when they don't res, like we've lost all three boomerangs and that is d disastrous. Like our last boomerang is the most important. Having two boomerangs would be really, really good uh, because then we can have our deck always have a boomerang and our hand always have a boomerang. So we have max to work into prognostic, which would be sick. The fact that we only have one boomerang unless we can somehow make a successful run on here, which is possible actually, it, it is possible. No, I think we should work on that. So here we can draw up again. I think we just need to get as much money as we can. So we can draw once, we'll get the mantle for sure. Yeah, okay. So we don't need our deck. So install the mantle using this. So we have five charges on there. Mind you, we can only use two a run. 
Uh, and here we still have six cards in hand. So here we want to use the charge and install. So I think of anything we run archives. And if we dirty laundry, we're down to six cards left. Not the punitive matters, but we could dirty laundry archives. See if they res. If they res, we can use a mantle to just, it doesn't matter. We just make the mantle into a, yeah, whatever. We'll just do this because um, we need money. But yeah, now we can simul chip this turn. This could be an SDS. And if that's an SDS and it trashes another program, yeah, th then we're kind of in a bad spot. Uh, Masterwork, no thanks. No, prognostic. Yeah, it's a blueberry diesel. Okay, no further action. So what we're going to do is we're going to simul chip, crash the mantle. There's no way for us to use the mantle. Is there? No. Uh, we could reveal the top of our deck, but that seems bad. To get a hyperbaric, I don't know if they can fast events this thing. Then we'll place a power counter. Place a power counter. So now R&D is something we can contest. Breach server. All right. We have 15 credits. They have th three counters on here. And we can see three cards on R&D. So I think that's an ice wall, right? So this is one credit. This is um, one, two, three, four, five. This is free. And six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we could do it, but it'd be all our money. I think the Hail Mary run here might be correct. Hmm. Again, if this is an ice wall, one credit. That we have to boost two. If we do it next turn, we save four credits. So I don't know. I don't think we're in a rush. Can we also run server one? Yeah, we probably could. We could pin all threading. Oh, we saw a punitive there. So obviously they've given up on the punitive. So we know one less card in hand. Kayambe grid. Kayambe grid. Mind you, this is a card in front of the server. They can't use this to advance the card installed in the root of the server. So they can't use this like a Lacosta to advance agendas a bit quicker. Uh, this is a nice wall to three strength. So that's fine for us. I think it's only the Pharaoh says is, is ugly, but with two advancements, it's only uh, still five strength, so we can break it for five. Take a tag. Let's see what they do here. This is problematic. So the problem is we only have one pinhole. So we pinhole threading to access this card season agenda. We have to deal with the Kayambe. We can also pinhole threading down the Kayambe and run the server. We have a boomerang for this. Eight strength on this is probably like an ice wall. Uh, there's not a lot of ice that like scales infinitely, so it would be like the last Colossus or the ice wall. I think that's the only stuff that scales infinitely. We haven't seen a Naket yet, which I'd expect there to be a Naket. Naket is also ugly for Kayambe. Fortunately, our Chezos are useless on their remote server. But this is why you run the, um, the simul chip for sure. So we know what our deck is. We do want to draw that card. Eventually we will when we install the boomerang uh, because we want our deck to be only a boomerang. So every run, we can go get the boomerang from our deck, probably for free. And actually, we'll get another boomerang back if we run R&D. And I think that's the reason why we'd want to. Uh, the issue here is the last SDS. If it's the last SDS, like, it is a big problem. Triple advance and gain a credit. Okay. So triple advance, gain a credit. We have two options here. We can either run the remote server. We run the remote server. We have to deal with a triple advanced card. No idea what that could be. We can boomerang it. Um, we could deal with a, what's the cost of a nine strength ice wall? A lot. We'd want to boomerang that, if anything. And then, oh, actually, we have to boomerang everything. I think we're just going to run R&D and hope. Yeah, I think we're going to run R&D and hope. So again, this will be probably one credit. This is uh, two, three for strength or five to break. They don't have that much money to res stuff, mind you. If they res a Ferris here, like that's most of their money. So sorry, one to break, hopefully. Uh, two, three for strength for five. This is a boomerang. And then we have to pay six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Mind you, we have four credits here to be used. Let's go. What are we waiting for? Uh, nope, we don't need to do either of those. So we're assuming that they're on about uh, eight agendas. It's seven to eight agendas. So there's probably three left between R and D and HQ. If that's an agenda, let's see if they res here. They're thinking about it and again. If the worst comes to worst, we have a flip switch if we need it. So if they res too much here too, we can also just like pinhole threading archives for the Kion Bay and consider running server one. As soon as they have less than seven credits, like we don't have to respect the Pharos anymore. So like the upper upper like echelon of ice is Colossus, which is fine. The, though the problem is if as soon as we like boomerang one of these cards. We're going to lose a boomerang on the Colossus. And we want to have two boomerangs in our deck because it makes us really good at dealing with big eyes. Just nice. Well, okay, that's exactly what we thought. So this might cost them a fair bit of money and they still need about one credit to score this out or two credits. No, advance, credit, advance, advance. Okay, so break that for one. That's the ice wall that we saw in hand. So we're pretty sure that's a Winchester, of course. Uh, yeah, we might as well. We're going to use all of them. So we want to break all of this. I don't want to give them money because they still have to score out a last agenda. Maybe it's a hostile. We'll break both the subroutines. Okay, Hordem doesn't get like Hordem's a weird one because it doesn't really scale well into a late game. In theory, we can advance this as soon as possible so the face check is meaningful. That's better for you. But in a late game, besides the AI clause, which I don't know how many AIs there are running around startup, uh, maybe there's Mayflies and is it just like admin? 
probably forgetting one. Um, that's okay. It's a really good subroutines though. And it's not bad for the, for the res cost. You get your credit back. All right, Boomerang, you're back in, baby. And we have the 20. Unfortunately, we're going to have to pay six credits. We can access the top of the deck first before deciding to trash the crown, but Kayan Bay, yeah, we'll pay six. Please. Card from deck, planogram, okay, card from deck. Send a message, there we go. Ooh, finally, good game. Oh, those sort of matchups are a total grind where uh, the opponent isn't very aggressive to jam on the table. They just sit back and triple ice everything. And like, unfortunately, the best thing you can do, uh, thanks you too. The best thing you can do more often than not is to also like mimic them. Right, if they're not rushing the remote server, it's kind of on you to be like, oh, overextend and spend like, you know, it's now eight credits for a single access. Don't take that. Don't do that. Because you can camp the remote server. Uh, you have the pinhole threading. You have ways to deal with this sort of stuff. Yeah, so it's a bit tricky. Again, it's a 50 minute game, which is uh, not probably tournament safe where you need to go a bit faster. We were thinking on our side there, but like that's where you definitely need a uh, strong multi-access. And the twinning is it. We can make every single run a maker's eye or a dirty, uh, sorry, a legwork. And that's... And incredibly powerful. All right, well, that's what this deck looks like. Um, I like the Paladin Puemo a fair bit. Whether we should go for two mutual favor, a mutual favor, or inside job, that's the idea. But this deck is really fun. And I know it can be quite intimidating with the amount of triggers that you have to like stack up. Uh, but not only does learning on Jinteki.net help, I promise you, once you get into the groove and you get the sort of aggressive run-based engine, there's nothing like it. Early game can be a bit scary, but once you're spun up, it's quite fun. And you see the amount of economy you get out of these two credit per turn cards on the Chesvas. It's great. I'm not 100% sure you need the mantle. If you're going into the Paladin Puemo, I think you could drop this. I'm not sure what to play. MU is a bit tight for Rizekis, but maybe another clone chip but or a clot, potentially. Uh, it does give you some good value with the simul chip if you need it, and I like that a fair bit. But that's a list, and I think it's really quite fun. And I'm very interested to continue to iterate on this thing because I don't think it's, uh, I think it's far from solved. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Ciao.